Hallelujah. 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 You have a rock, you may be seated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a splendid, excellent blessing it is, Yisrael, that your grants unto a nation of people to gather in the season and the time that he commands them for his Shabbat is an oath, it is a vow between Yisrael and the people of Yah. So those that have no compunction, no desire to walk in the light of that is because they are not the Zira, the seed of Yisrael. They are an exchange people, they are foreign to the commonwealth of Yisrael. And as his nation, his people, his elect, we must comply with all that he commands us. We must understand that there is only going to be a residue, a yet there, simply a small bit that shall be saved. We as a nation of people, we have, through the process of time, we have garnered all kinds of spiritual concepts when it comes to Yah. What this has done, it has created this superficial type of attitude and spirit. It is one that is uh, based upon the parameter of falsehoods. And not only that, it is a synthetic form that produces nothing at all. You cannot get any life truly out of that which is synthetic. Because the process of that which is synthetic, it always comes from that which is dead. And we as Yisraya, we must allow his Torah to destroy and to break down the strongholds of our minds that have been shaped by this synthetic form of thing we call love, our emotions, our compassion and consideration. To be quite frank, we simply do not give a damn. First of all, we don't give a damn about Yah. I know that we will all say that we love Him, we fear Him, but those are based upon, uh, and our actions are based upon this uh, predisposition, uh, that which is synthetic, it is not real, and it's not genuine. I ask the day for the brothers to sing one song because I'm going to teach and preach. I do not give a damn who it offends, who it affects. I'm not concerned with that. It is one thing that I have found out, I know, I have experienced, even what I did not understand the beauty of Yah's truth. That there are those that will say that so you don't teach or you don't show any kind of compassion. You don't show a, an enriched devotion, a love that is deeply seated in your bosom. And the reason I say that is because uh, when I took the trip on last week, I did journey up to another elder. And because of my veracity, and I use the word veracity, which simply implies my authoritative actions when it comes to truth. I will not succumb to false isms and lies. I will not surrender to a nation of men that are effeminate and weak, that do not express the strength of Torah. And so with me, it is always this accusation against me that I show no compassion. I have no compassion. I want the compassion of Yah. Do you want that? You that are listening, do you want the compassion of Yah? We answer quite quickly, don't we? When I began this teaching today, I want to ask you as I proceed, is this compassion or is it not? Is this the compassion of Yah? Do we understand his compassion? Is there a limitation on the compassion of Yah? And what are the tremendous ingredients to bring about the true Compassion of Almighty Yah in the bosom of Yisra Yah. 
We have been a nation of people that have been deceived by a mind that is violently wicked. And those that have shaped in this nation the constitution of Torah, they have been wicked, unscrupulous, damnable dogs. They are of the bastard slip. And the bastard slip is they have no identity at all with Almighty Yah. And when a messenger of truth stands, then there is an opposition to resist, to repudiate, and to denounce him as to say uh, he is not speaking with compassion. He doesn't talk with love. He doesn't care about the people of Yah. He doesn't care about their emotions. Damn your emotions. I don't give a damn about your emotions because your emotions don't give a damn about Yah. I had an elder say to me on the past weekend that Yah has given him the ability to discern. So when there are those in the midst of him, he can discern the ruach of one. Well, as I sat there before this elder, I said to myself, how we have corrupted ourselves um, in this religious persona of this dirty, sluttish whore we call religion and Christianity. Because men today, they literally think that the word discernment or discerning, regardless as how it is used, to yada, to nasa, to understand, to perceive, to know by association, they think that it is this telepathy of the spiritual exiting the body and then searching one to find out what's wrong with them. Well, hell, the wicked in the world can observe one, their actions, uh, their attitude, and tell you what their problem is. And so men speak that way thinking uh, that that gives them an upper hand, but it doesn't give you a damn thing with me when it comes to Torah. I don't give a damn whether you're 89 or 79. The truth is the truth. And I was stunned as a warrior for the immense of Yah. I don't give a damn who doesn't stand with me. You understand? I don't care how men criticize and uh, malign me. That's not an issue. Because of those that speak from this rostium here, I am the only one that really has no compassion. You understand? But that's all right. I'm not saying this uh, to elect any kind of uh, emotional uh, type of uh, pity for me. Damn our pity. I will show you why I say that. We don't know Yah. We don't know Yah. We don't know his expression. We don't know when he speaks. Damn that we need to be compassionate and kind. Let's see what the Torah says. You don't even know how to be compassionate. Unless our minds and our bosom are shaped by Torah. You don't understand the nakhan, the compassion, the benevolence, the deep-seated, rooted love of Yah within his bosom. We don't give a damn about his Yoshech, his Hamashiach. He doesn't mean a damn thing to us. That's why we sin willfully. We defy what Yah says because we are not of the household of Yisrael. Yeah. When the thong rushed upon your shoe and said, your mother, your brother, your sister waits, he says, hold up, Yisrael. Who is? Yeah. Who is my mother? Who is my brother? Who is my sister? He asked them the question and he answered he said, those that do the will of my Abba, that adheres to Torah, that loves Torah, that enact upon the instructions of Torah. He said, I want to emphatically tell you the same. The same is my Ima, the same is my Ach, the same is my Achot. Is that compassion? We're going to examine the compassion of Yah today and see if you have compassion. It is one thing, the strength of any compassion. It is based upon the premina of one ruach. And that is the spirit of mishpatim. To make judgments and to judge and to do it righteously. We have construed the ways of Yah. 
And if what I say today doesn't add up in Torah, then make me a liar. Then I'm a damn liar. I don't know ya. And if it does, then we are damn liars. We operate in this synthesized world, this generation. As I look today in this damnable, deplorable thing called the newspaper, I did not read the article, but I saw the universal Unitarians that they had had this big rally for the damn faggot dogs' rights. You did not see the gathering of people during one of the most deplorable times of history in this nation. When people were kicked to the ground, when Bo Connor would put the dogs on those little Negro women and cause them to growl and to gnaw at their private parts, to bite their titties off and to sick the dogs on those men, and yet these damn wicked whorehouses. You did not have the Baptist marching, or those marching like they're doing for some damn dirty sodomite beasts. These are damn beasts. The rights are not like the rights. We are inherently born with the rights of Almighty God. And so you did not have the cries. You did not have the representation of those running to the streets of other nationalities. When they did, they marched in contact with those that were other diasporas. Yet these damn dirty faggots, they're damn dirty dogs. They're faggot. Y'all's going to kill every last one of them. We're going to deal with y'all's compassion. They're damn faggot dogs. They're dirty beasts. They're birthed out of hell. And yet uh, the state of New York passed the law that these damn faggots, what they call men with men and women with women, that they're going to marry and have what they call their civil union. This is how twisted they have twisted your sons and your daughters, that if we do not have messengers that will stand and defy these damnable lies and show us what's in the depth of our bosom, you will give in to that. You will feel comfortable around some damn faggots. You will feel comfortable with the wicked and sitting in their environment and then you're sharing in their wicked activities. You will feel comfortable with that. I don't give a damn if it's your mom or your daddy. I don't give a damn if it's your son or your daughter. And these dirty beasts, these damnable sodomites, he's going to damn them all. And yet the nation, this wicked nation, you better come out of this damn whore. You better stop learning the ways of this Jezebel. You better stop acting like this dirty slop, this slop of a bastard slip. Yet they rejoice. Yet they have their parades and men kissing men and women kissing women. That is one of the most appalling, deployable wickedness that one could ever partake of. This is no different than we joining ourselves with the spirit of the world and joining hand in hand that we defend the wicked. If you defend any wicked, any kind of wickedness is wrong. Beginning in your own bosom, you defend it, it's wrong. You defend your wicked sons and your daughters, your granddaughters, your grandbabies, you are absolutely wrong. You're wrong. When they say I have no compassion, that's all right with me. I don't mind the world saying that these worldly minded men I don't mind you that are worldly minded saying that about me. I have no compunction because I know you have not the mind of Almighty God. Yeah. I want to examine that, that one word, its difference in its expression in Torah, what it complies, what it means, how it is juvenated, how the birth of it comes in the bosom of man, and how do we know that we have the compassion of Almighty Yah and Yahshua HaMashiach. You know, I said to my Israel, I said, this is one of the most deplorable, damnable generations upon the face of the earth. Because we all say that we love Yah. 
And we all say that we have the Yira, which is the great regard unto Yah with fear. We fear Yah with great reverence and trembling and with a great fear of his power. We acknowledge him. We see our ways constantly before us. And then we go to his throne of Hasids, whereby his mercies that are compassionate are shared upon us or showered upon us. And we all say that we fear him or that we are. It is a, a profound fear of Yah because we have seen the works of his hands. We have experienced that in our lives. We know what that represents. It represents one of the greatest honors of all. And we say we fear him, don't we? Yet there is little fear for you. I would have begun here in the Torah. And I'm going to take my time. <clears throat> if you have something to do, then leave. You don't want to listen, go on. I don't give a damn. But I will teach what's in the book. And if you buy it, it makes me no difference at all. None whatsoever. I would have begun here because it's vitally important. Uh, I want to define the word compassion. How it is defined in the Hebraic uh, state. It is to love, to have a passion of love uh, that is deeply. It is one that where one shows the great mercies of Yah. It is to be compassion and to have the tender affections. Who doesn't want that? Who doesn't want that kind of, uh, of compassion? I do. Does this represent the compassion of Yah? Sure it does. It is his compassion. And so everything that Yah does, uh, it is based upon his compassion. It is based upon his deep love, first of all, uh, that he loves himself. Love your neighbor, have compassion on you, uh, to be merciful, be kind, to be tenderly kind to you, uh, if he commands us to love our neighbors as he loves, and we love ourselves, uh, isn't it the same command in his bosom? Yes. He loves himself greatly. So everything that God does must be based upon these adjectives, uh, upon the tenets of what compassion is. I will say that again. We can sit here all drunken, uh, but everything that God does must be based upon his mercy, his deep affection for us, his great compassion, his tender mercies, everything that he does must be based upon that. Everything he does must be based upon that. Dawi speaks continuously. Let me move quickly here. In the book of Tehillim, in the book of Psalms, chapter 86, verse 15, the beauty of Yah's compassion. And this is where Dawi expresses it so beautifully. And not only on this account, there are many places where he expressed the tenets of this verse. He says, but you are sovereign, Yah, you are the mighty one. And he said that you are Shabbat, you are full. You are enriched, you are full of rahum or compassion. Isn't that what the statement says? Is Yah full of, is he Jabba? Is he full of compassion? Is he full, is his life, is his spirit, uh, is his word enriched by Rahum, compassion? His love kindness, his tenderness, uh, is it not so Yisraya? If he is full of it, then there is nothing else uh, that can enrich. If you take a glass and fill it up with water, the only thing you can do is put more water and there will be an overflowing. Is that right? Yeah. So he is so full of compassion that there is an overflowing of Almighty Yah. Do you hear that, Yisra Yah? He is full of Rahum, of compassion. And the Rahum, this compassion always infers to Almighty Yah. He doesn't speak of us having this kind of compassion. It is always him that our minds our ability to phantom to understand unless we walk in the delight of the torah we will never understand because the torah persists in one thing it constantly judge us and corrects us it constantly judges us and corrects us so yah is full of rahum he is full of compassion 
and he is full of hasad or kindness. He is uh, he is hanun, he is friendly, and Yah is long suffering. Do you understand that? That he forbears us. He endures our infractions. He is long suffering uh, and he is rap, he is plenteous, uh, he is abundant uh, in mercy, in his kindness, uh, in his faithfulness, uh, and truth in his imat. Uh, his truth is firm. There is no room for it to be broken. His imat is firm, it is faithful, it is the stability of his kingdom, it is what stabilizes us, it is what gives us the imun of the strength of stability in our lives, it is the Torah, not this damnable synthetic message that our minds have been shaped by. So when Yah begins to act uh, in the power of his compassion, uh, we will not say that he is not compassionate. Uh, so when a messenger speaks with the authority of Yah, he is not a compassionate man. When he judge your wickedness and your sins, uh, he is not compassionate. When he is forthright with us, uh, then he is not compassionate. That's the synthetic mind deduction of what is of Yah. And what is not of Yah? Listen, only a few is going to hear Yah. Not everyone has been given the ears to hear. I've given them ears to hear. The Ozen, the Hashanach, and yet they will not hear. He's given us ears. We cannot hear. He is full. He is Shoba, full of compassion that's what Yah is we're going to examine his compassion and see if this is the compassion we want or do we want the compassion that the world tells you that this is compassion they saying to us that these damn dirty faggots isn't that amazing that this group of damn wicked dogs yet in this nation the people of your pigmentation don't even have a damn voting right. They must renew the Voting Right Act every 10 years since 1964. But some dirty bastards and dogs, and yet a people that have labored and toiled in this damn wicked nation, yet they don't even have the damn right to vote. It must be debated every damn 10 years. A damn dirty, wicked, bastardized people that their damn minds are so twisted and convoluted that a nation of people and a nation that they don't have the right to vote but yet so overnight they give damn dirty faggots the damn right to marry and they don't give a damn about those that uh, were of the diasporas, those that are the lineage uh, of Yisra'ya, those that have been birthed uh, out of the bosom of Yah, but they give some damn freak of a dog. Yeah. Yeah. Yet they say that they don't have civil rights, these damn faggots. Uh, yeah, I will go ahead. You're a nation of people in this nation that have labored and their sons and daughters robbed and butchered and killed whereby they would take them down in Louisiana and put them out to the damn alligators and use them to hunt alligators and the gators would clamp hold up to the young babies. We are a damn dumb generation. We're stupid. You know, when I speak like this, I'm radical and I'm not sensitive. And yet this damn twisted white mind will paint a damn lie and justify it. And yet this niggerish mind of individuals will always try to defend this damn creepiness of that damn wicked white mind. We become so damn we are compassionate. You don't know what compassion is. We are so sensitive, we want to defend even uh, the damn wickedness uh, of the white mind. They put, and the lies that they put, this damn faggot of a beast, this damn Jesus, their Christo, 
before you and you believe that that was the image of the son of the begotten of Yah. And yet if I say that's a damn freaking a liar, that I'm too radical, that I'm a racist, then tell me what these damn individuals were. It were more than racist and your mind is so synthesized and so in tune, you're ready to defend the damn wickedness. That's why you defend that wickedness. You feel sorry. He, he may say something to fit. I don't give a damn about fitting or fitting any man. These are damn lies. There is no lie in the truth. When a man can pray the lie, it's so obvious that he doesn't have any damn shame. He's a wicked man. I'm not afraid. Hell, no white man is going to stand with me. If he's the son of Yisrael, he will stand. But no damn white man, the white mind cannot endure truth no more than any other mind that, uh, that is not attached to the mind of Yahshua HaMashiach. And we are so ignorant, we will defend that in our bosom. We will have an emotion for that and be pitiful. I am not pitiful for the lies that have been taught and have been spreaded abroad among the nations and the people of Yah that even our hearts are not even sensitive to truth. So when a man, a messenger speaks, unless he speaks with this monotone voice uh, that is appeasing to our flesh, then he is not a messenger of Yah. Give me something that I can relish in my sins and my self-righteousness and my own synthetic form of compassion. I am all right. No, we must cry out. And spare not, we must cut on, that even our veins in our necks can be seen, Yisrael. And I don't give a damn. Yes, I will use that until I die. I don't give a damn about this wicked world. You can care for it. But I don't give a damn. I care for the kingdom, the Melchut of Almighty God. So we know that he's full of compassion, right? Is he full of it? Or is he partial? He's full of compassion. He is very kind, he is friendly, he is chanun, he is long-suffering, he is plenteous, abundant in mercy, his chassid, his kindness of faithfulness, and he is plenteous in his imant, in his faithfulness, his truth, in his stability, in his reliability that we can rely upon the Torah of Yah. That's what Yah is. That's what he is. And so if Yah, if this is the state of Yah, then we must have men that stand in the firmness of this. And they must convey that there, even though the opposition come, the truth is still reliable. They don't alter it for anyone, not themselves, their own possession, they don't alter that. We find that today. It's a disingenuous generation. People say they know how to love, you don't know a damn thing about love. How do you know that you fear Yah? Who, who in here know that they fear Yah? How do you know you fear him? You that are listening, how do you know you fear Yah? We think because we say that I fear him, I, I got a fear for him. That's not so. I want to read that before I go. We're going to do with compassion. How do I know I fear Yah? Shalomo tells us in the book of Mishli, Proverbs. In the book of Proverbs, chapter 8, verse 13. He said, the fear of Yah is to hate evil, to hate Geha, to hate pride. Isn't that what they call it? Gay pride? Yah says you must hate Geha. They call themselves gays, don't they? That is what pride is, it is Geha. You must say, gay your pride, you must ha hate the ga'un, the arrogant ways, uh, and the evil ways, the evil ways, uh, and the tapukha, the forward mouth. Uh, the mouth, do I hate the mouth that speaks? It has no control. The mouth that doesn't give a damn about what it says, it's going to respond regardless, irregardless. Uh, you will know your fear. Yeah, that is the fear of Yah. And when one fears Yah, Yah says that we, he says that the milak of Yah is in camp about them that fear almighty Yah. And he is only around those that fear Yah, Yisrael. And not only is he in camp, but he is there to deliver them. What is that implying that he's there to deliver them, to give them the skill and the military power to fight the battle of Almighty Yah. That is not the Yashach. 
but that is the halits, the halits or the halats. It is to give them the might of wisdom to fight the spiritual wars that they shall be battle with. That is what it is, Yisraya. So not only is he encamped about them that fear Yah, but he is there to also to halats, halats, to deliver them, to give them the military or the spiritual skills. Is not the Melakta ministering in the Ruach of Yah? Do not they come to minister unto us? And so the man doesn't fear Yah, he's not encamped about the house. How do I know I fear because you hate your damn evil ways, you hate your damn mouth when it speaks. You say things you despise that you hate. You know it was wrong. You hate that. You hate your evil ways. Not my evil ways, but your evil ways. Your own thoughts guide you into evil ways. And make you do evil things. You want to blame it on someone else, but I'm here to tell you, you're not going to blame it on someone else. You're not going to escape at all. You're not going to get by with your damn evil ways and your damn evil lies. You want to know what a man he fears, Yah? Would he hate those things? What can say all day like, oh, I fear Yah, you damn lawyer. I don't need some kind of a, a mystical a, a reaction in my mind to know who is of Yah and who is not. I judge him by the character of the Torah of Yah. I watch the foreigners and the people of Yah damn the world. The disingenuousness, and they're not real, they're false and they're fake. And yet you will say that he is fake and she is fake and you're fake as hell. I don't want nobody around me that doesn't love you. Get away from me. Go, you damn devil. I watch these damn devils that have been here. I want them out there, those that I put off these grounds. I don't want them here. I don't want you here. I want you going. I don't give a damn. You can, you can say you have compassion. You, you, can, you, you can have some sympathetic uh, emotion for them. I will not. Yeah. Well, that's wrong. Can, can I read us a story quickly? I would read this in Echan, in the book of Lamentation, the lamenting of Jeremiah, Jeremiah. Turn quickly. I want to read because I'm going to finish my course today. Hallelujah. The book of Echan, the book of Lamentations, chapter 4, verse 1. And here Yah speaks, and, and Yeremiah is he's weeping because of the deplorable state of Yerushalayim, of Yisrael, his people. How they have moved so drastically away from the Torah of Yah. And Yah is compassion. He's full of compassion, isn't he? So whatever Yah does, is it compassion? You, you, whatever Yah does, it is based upon his compassion. Sure it is. Everything he does, he is full of compassion. He tells us here in the midst of his great lamentation, Yeremiah, in the book of Echan, Echa, uh, Lamentation chapter 4, verse 1, he cries out, How is the goal become dead? And how is the most fine Zahab, has the most purest of that, those that are of Yah, how have they changed? The stones of the Kodash place are poured out in the top of every street. He identifies, he says, uh, verse 2, and the precious, uh, the yaka, the most prized, the most valuable ones, the rare ones, uh, the ones that have the weight of Torah in them. Uh, he said the most prized sons uh, of Zion, comparable to fine gold, uh, how are they esteemed? As though they're, they're nothing but earthly pictures or earthen vessels, the work of the hand of a potter. Even the jackals or the sea monsters draw out of their breasts. Even the jackals, even the, the lion, the monsters or those that are tenacious in the order of Yah, they, they look at the sons of, of the precious one of Tezayan and they see how dim they are, how they have fallen and say, oh my, look at a people that was equated to the fine gold, and yet the sons, the zahar, the precious sons, where are they today? They're given over unto every kind of wickedness and horror, every kind of unclean thing, because the bath, the daughters are wicked today. They don't love Yah. They have no desire for the purity of Yah. They give, they give suck to the young ones, 
He says, the daughters or the daughter of the bath of my people is become, they become achzah, they become cruel. The daughters have become cruel. They're mean as hell. They're seditious. They're wicked. They don't give a damn. They will kiss you and tell you they love you and they will smite the dagger in your back. He said, the daughters, the bath of Tizayon, they are cruel. They act wickedly against each other. They act harshly. They don't even give a damn about each other. I didn't say this. Is this the same one full of compassion? Oh, I'm going to read what the book said. I don't give a damn whether you buy it. Yah says you are acting cruel. He says you are that way. It is not what I say. Are we not in a time that is deplorable? A time that is so wicked that a damn faggot. That they are that damn faggot more than they are a true man. That they defy every law of righteousness to incorporate some of the most devious, damnable, twisted things there is. This is a wicked nation. It is a cruel nation. And the daughters have learned cruelty. You find these educated ignorances of women. They come out. They, they treat the man with deplorable type of attitudes. And they look at him with disdain. And that's why they are husbandless. And they will never get a damn husband. Yeah. And so the men that they play them like dirty whores and dogs. What they are. And I'm talking about the houses that are full of that. You call your damn church houses. That's where they are. I'm not holding back one thing. You're cruel. You're harsh. You're nasty as hell. You're mean. You're sadistic. You lie and say you love and you don't give a damn. You kiss and say you can't, you don't give a damn. You see, the reason the men are that way because of this and doing the diasporas of us, the people of color, those that had the seal of Yah's identity, that was one of the first things that this nation did. It would take the woman and pit her against the man. As she would talk nasty and the daughters, like the mother, so other daughters. You put that in your damn dirty daughters. You put that in, they would talk nasty to the man. She, and, and the Mr. White man would take advantage of her, of her physical uh, delights. You will go to hell, you can try to look over it all you want to. And I'm not changing anything. But this is somewhat social. Well, uh, in order for us to walk in this, we must live in a social setting. You understand? Yeah. Hallelujah. And so we have seen the birth of this in the women today. Hallelujah. Yeah. That they don't give a damn because they've been taught wrong. So they talk to their man any kind of a way. They speak without control of their damn lips. You might as well love me, daughters. Hallelujah. You say you fear y'all, don't you? Then let us hate the evil, your pride, your arrogance, your evil ways. Let's hate that. Yeah. Now don't hate me, hate your damn evil ways. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. No, y'all's not going to give your messenger like this to abuse, all right? And that's the truth. Yeah. I speak yeah. the truth out of his book. He says, the people, he said, the daughters, Lamentation 4.3, the daughter of my people is become cruel. Like the ostrich in the wilderness. That's the way she is. Her feet, we have had ostriches here. And we watch how they run and how they move. Her, her feet are like, her mouth is like uh, the, the feet of the ostrich. The ostrich will abandon the eggs uh, when, when the jackal comes. That's where the daughters are. They will abandon uh, the prayer life, the Torah of Yah. And they think they are compassionate. And they're not compassionate. We're going to deal with the compassion of Yah today. And I'm going to finish my course. He said, the tongue of the suckling child cleave to the roof of his mouth for thirst. Where is the living water? Where's the power of the eduth of Yahshua? Where's the power that flowing from your loins, mothers? Where is that ark? Where is that power flowing? Where is that living substance of life? Is not Yahshua the living water of Yah? He is the Mayim of Yah. Where is the testimony of that power? Why is it that the children look for, look for that uh, resurrection of the strength uh, from your bosom and all they see is cruelty and wickedness and every kind of vile thing. Uh, and they hear your mouth uh, of cruelty against your holds, uh, against your ark. Uh, why is it that way? You say you have compassion. You don't have a damn thing. 
The young children ask bread. They ask them of the knowledge of the letter of Yahshua. They want to see that in the lives of their parents. They don't see a damn thing. They ask for bread. And no man break it to them. No man breaks it to them. No man breaks down the wisdom of Torah. No one teach them the law today. For the damn folly, internet, uh, and texting, uh, and every damn thing, television. Uh. But where's the breaking of the bread? Where are the true men today? Where are they? They're not precious anymore. Yeah. We're going to see the one that is full of compassion. And I will show you what compassion is. Yeah. I'll show you why we don't have no damn compassion. We think we do. Yeah. You see, people will not think I'm compassionate today. That's all right. Yeah. Hallelujah. They did, verse 5, they did feed delicately. They that fed delicately, now he said they are shamane, they are, they are desolate. They are stupefied, they can't even hear. Those that feed off their little flesh and feed off their little emotions. Well, I was nice to them, I was kind to them. You haven't been kind to yourself. How can you be kind to someone when you have not loved yourself, when you have not hated your pride and your arrogance, your evil ways and your froward mouth, how in the hell can you care for someone else? How can you? When the milak of Yah has not even taught you or delivered you to show you the skilled nature of fighting the spiritual battle, you don't even know how to fight the spiritual battle, Yisrael. Yeah, we are lost people. Unless you raise up the nobby, the true messengers with fire in their mouth, we're going to all die and go to hell. And that's a fact. Because we are fat from our delicacies. We are eating wickedly. We eat from our damn flesh. Where is the man that breaks the bread with the little children? Are we not, he said, the daughters of my people. Are we not the children of Yah? Where are the men that break the bread? Where are those that break the bread of delight? Where are those that break down the bread and pour us uh, the living substance of the water of Yah, the testimony of Yahshua? Where are they? Because we don't have it, the daughters are cruel today. They're mean, they're nasty as hell. It has taken the beauty of the men today. They have no beauty of the aura of Almighty Yah. It has taken away their shine and their lust. He gave you to be a help me to the man. You become a damn dirty dog what you become because you've listened to the world. Yeah. You want to shake your ass and look like the world. Yeah. You want to act like a slut yeah. instead of acting like a daughter to Zion. Yeah. You want to wear your skirt tight so your ass can be seen because you're full of lust. You're burning in your damn wicked flesh. You're going to die that way, Jesse Bell. Yeah. So the men today, they have no lust and no beauty today. Hell, they go home, they're not happy at home. I don't want to live that way. I'm not going to live that way. They got to leave their home to find some shalom. That's wicked. No, I'm not going out of my home. Get the hell out, woman. Well, oh, that's cruel, isn't it? Uh, we're going to find out if Yah, is he full of, if he's full of compassion? Let me read. Let me show you him then. He says that in verse 5, they, they that did feed delicacy, he said, uh, uh, they are desolate now in the streets, and they, and they that were brought up in scarlet embraced down here, those that were brought up in the beauty of Yah's knowledge, that have walked in the beauty of his strength, now they, they embrace this, the dung hill. They embrace the hill over there that we have. We have a dung hill here, don't we? We have the turkey dung. And they rather wallow in the dunghill than to uh, embrace the truth of Yah. They rather wallow in the filthiness of their own flesh uh, than to hear what the Torah of Yah speaks unto them. They embrace filthiness. Uh, and the man is so shallow today, he embraces the shallowness uh, of their wickedness, their unclean ways. Uh, he covers that. Uh, he honors that. He tries uh, to, to cover it for her instead of reproving it, rebuking it, exposing it, making it known uh, that it doesn't contaminate the daughters of Tizion. Why? Because she has been given over to prostitution. And once what is given unto prostitution, they bring horror man and they speak it out of their mouths and they spread that spirit. Yeah. Just like me being unfaithful with my issue. And going beyond the boundaries of that. It's a wickedness. Yeah. It's vile. 
He didn't open every kind of unclean spirit to man. When a man comes to the beauty of God's truth, you don't go back and embrace the downhill. You embrace truth. The things that are behind you, they're forgotten. And now you press on to the high calling and the mark of excellence of Yah, that is, and the power of the testimony of Yahshua Hamashiach. I'm going to deal with Yah's compassion today. And we're going to see whether it is compassion. He is full of compassion. So everything he does, it comes from the puffery of the well of compassion. Hallelujah. Verse 6, he says, I want to tell you, hear this closely. This is Yah. He says, for the ovon or the punishment of the guilty of your iniquity of a daughter of my people is greater than the hata'a, the sin of Sodom. He said the punishment, the sins, the iniquity of the daughters of my people, the daughter, it is greater than the sin of Sodom and Gomorrah. It's more filthy than these damn faggots that they march in. It's more filthy than them talking about love. It's more filthy than them taking the very covenant embrace of Yah that he said, I won't destroy the earth no more by water. And he gave us a rainbow for the covenant. And these damn freaks of beasts will take that and use that as their symbol of covenant relationship. They are dirty damn bastards out of hell. They're bastard slips. A woman will array herself in all of her beautiful colors and all of her colors and think she represents the beauty of that color. She's a damn dirty thing. The daughter the daughter of my people her sins are, are wicked and because she has done that look at what she has produced your daughters can't be rebellious and hard headed that's why y'all never intend for a woman to leave her father's house until she was married the world has taught you you leave her house you you all you take care of yourself that's wrong so today they don't honor the head they have not learned how to honor. You're hard on the daughters. No, Yah is showing the daughters their wickedness as he shows the sons as well. Hallelujah. This is what, did Yah say this or are these my words? For the punishment of the iniquity of the daughter of my people is greater than the punishment of the sin of Sodom. These are not my words. And if we say we believe Yah, did he write this? He wrote it. Should this be taught? Should this be preached? It must be preached. He said that, that was overthrown in a moment. He said, I overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah in a moment. And he said, no hand. He said, my hand was not even weary in destroying that dirty slut. Do you understand that? He said, in a moment of time, I overthrew them. He said, the fire out of Hashemayim. He said, I didn't even get weary and overthrowing that wicked people. He's not going to get weary in overthrowing us as his people because we've allowed every kind of deplorable thing to come in because we think we have compassion and we think we care and we think we genuinely care for someone we love them. Yah yeah, says her nazir of the Nazarite those that are consecrated and devoted to Yah, that's what a, a Nazi is. Her Nazarites were pure than snow. Her Nazarite. It is a man taking the vow of commitment unto Yah. That as far as my house and me, we're going to serve Yah. We're going to walk in the way of Yah. That's what a pure Nazarite is. He says, for as my house... The testimony of Yahshua will be the emblem of power, for he is my head. And I am the head of this domain. I will not let you, woman, the children, go beyond the boundaries of Yah's purpose in this house. And that is this house to serve Yah. He said they were whiter than milk. They were more ruddy in body than rubies. They were so pure. The ambience of those men were pure. They were men that shined. They were men that were clean. Their minds were clean. Their actions, their thoughts were clean. He said, they're, and they're polishing as sapphire. They were so polished and so sharp. When they spoke, the demons had to flee. When they rose up to correct the matter, the children were quiet. The wives submitted. She 
she submitted herself unto that pure authority as she received the Merakai of the blessings of Yah. Today they rise up. Now you never let any woman take the strength of your rush. You don't do it because of some sexual type of uh, entitlement. Damn that. You serve Yah, man, and love Yah. Hallelujah. That's what you do. And hold fast to that which is right. Yes, the appearance, verse 8, blacker, it was hashach. It was hidden, concealed, than a coal. They are not known in the street. Their skin cleaved to their bones. It withers. And it has become like sticks. They have no strength. They have no power of Yah. They're weak men. They're strengthless. They have no strength to stand in the Torah of Yah. Why? Because of the deplorable situation. And today you almost got to compromise. I will not compromise. This world wants you to compromise. Well, what's wrong with that? I had one that well, was asking me a plethora of questions. And they were asking me the questions in such a, in such a speed form. I said, no, hold on. Elder, you're not going to do that to me. I'm going to answer that now and show you how wrong you are in the matter. And then we will go to the next stage. You're not going to try to confuse me because you cannot. You're not going to make me be farola. And when the matter was all over, all he could do was get quiet and listen. And then the ox was laid to the root of the tree. And I began to pour it out like liquid fire. Whereby his mouth could not open. He was not going to buy me with his gain sin because of his age. It meant nothing to me. Nothing at all. Hallelujah. He says this now in verse 9. He said, they, is this compassion? They that be halal or fatally wounded that be slain with the sword are better than they that be slain with raebo or with hunger. For they pine away, stricken, through for the want of the fruit of the field. You tell me we're coming to the day, we're in the hour, that one that dies, it is better than one, the one that had been pierced with the sword or killed, the one whereby the Torah of Yah pierced you and killed you, it is better than those that hunger for the desire of the hearing of the Torah. And that is not only spiritual, but it is a natural state as well. Those that Yah say, I will kill and destroy, he said, it is better that you will kill than those that desire even the suckling of the breast as a babe desire from his mother. Yah, he gives us milk because we are babe. We cannot bear or we cannot bear the meat that he would, he would give unto us. So it would be better for those, you tell me we in a time, it has come to that time, it would be better for those that are killed and just die than those that hunger and desire, not only for the spiritual food, but for the natural food as well. Sure it is, because they pine away. It says now, listen, the hands, does it say that in your text? The hands of the pitiful, does it say pitiful? The Raham, and the Raham is a woman of great compassion. But the Rakham woman, she has bashal, she has baked, she has sodded, she has roasted their own children. We see today that we're by many women today, just the other day, that the woman put her child in a microwave oven and roasted that baby. They're putting their babies in microwave ovens. This is the sign of the spirit of the time that we are in. He said the women, the women that say that they're compassionate because they desire, they will roast their babies. The women say they won't love, they will damn their children, they will abandon them, they don't give a damn, they will go just because of what is important to them. And that is the truth, Yisrael. Hallelujah. This is what the daughters have become. That's why they must lay before Yah, not before their damn lust and their wickedness. This is compassion. You say you care. But the compassionate, the pitiful woman, the woman that is pitiful, they say that she is compassionate. She has sodden their own children. 
They were their meat in the destructions of the daughter of my people. The daughters have destroyed their daughters. That's their meat. And they have destroyed them. How can you be compassionate when you don't even care for yourself? Tell me. Tell me, Yisraeli. We do things in ignorance, and once you come to the knowledge of the truth, you begin to refortify yourself. That's why you need a messenger. Yeah. You have gone on your own. You have sought, oh, you don't need that. You don't have to do that. Who says so? You? Well, she is wrong. How wrong did she tell me? How wrong are you? Yet we will never incriminate ourselves to say how wrong we are. And yet we judge the nation of Yisraeli with such severity. Can I tell you? You're going to be judged that way. You've been judged that way this day. You've judged them without any thought. You've judged the people of Yah. You've judged their actions. And you do things that are so damn wicked and dirty. And you never judge your action. There are women that have been dirty whores and, and done things and, and don't even know Yah. And because of what has been done in their lives and they have seen the mercy and some tenderness upon them, uh, they know how to be tender to others. They know how to be kind because what? To whom much is given, much is required. Uh, to whom little is given, little is required. Just like the whore. Just like the woman that's a whore. She knows uh, what, she has been, what she has escaped from. Uh, the man knows what dangers uh, that were upon him and how Yah brought him out. And you find people in the natural state of mind uh, that have more of a concern and consideration than those that say they they love Yah, they are harsh, they are rude, and they are ruthless, and they don't give a damn. You'll be ruthless to one that have been kind to you, and have done things for you to show you their kindness. You don't talk to me, hell, I don't talk to many people. And yet you, you don't even know how to take that. That's how wicked this nation is. They don't even know, they, 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 but yet they think that they're kind. And they think that they know, and yet they don't even know kindness. Is young full of compassion? This is the reward and the judgments of the daughters for the own. The children are being eaten by the world today. They're being consumed by sin because mama was silly as hell. Her jocularity, she act like a damn clown. She act like a damn big buffoon. And the world is eating her children. You understand? Is that this world an oven that we're in today? The heat and the pressures of sin, how it presses against you? Sure it is. And they're giving their sons and their daughters over unto the world. They're giving them. And the world is eating their daughters. This is a natural action, and it is also one that is spiritual. They will eat their babies. You're talking about a woman that is compassionate, she's going to roast her own child. And eat her child. I hear people, when people, just like that woman here in South Carolina, she drowned all three of her children. Every word that she was nice, she was always with her children. She was always kind. She was always watching after her children. Yet she was a pitiful woman, as they said, a compassionate woman. But she killed her babies, didn't she? Oh, she loved her children. She was always there. Every need, she kept them clean. She washed them. She was a compassionate woman. She was a pitiful. You all might as well say, oh, man. You did not hear anyone say that she was a dirty Jezebel, did you? You did not hear that in the paper. You did not hear them say she was a big, fat hog and wicked. That's what she looked like. I'm not... Have it, I'm not speaking with despair on the woman. They said she was compassionate. She was loving. She was sweet. She was kind. She took care of children. She watched her children. She was always around them. She never let them out of her sight. And yet she killed them all. She killed all of her babies. She ran them in the river. Locked them in the car. Locked them down. And she killed her children. You understand? That woman the other day in California. She put her baby... Having two other children, she put a baby in the microwave oven and cooked that child to death. Cooked her baby. And yet they would say she was a sweet woman. She was kind. I would have never thought that that would be. We don't know the spiritual battle because we don't feel Yah. So there is no Milak encamped about you to prepare you for the military or the spiritual battles that you're going to encounter. And that's why you're falling into sin and to wickedness and you're pursuing that which is of your own lustful, wicked mind of vanity. 
You must set your house in order. According to Torah. They're going to cook their babies. They're going to cook them naturally. And they're already cooking them today. The cell phones are frying their daughters and sons' minds. The internet, the Wi-Fi is frying and cooking their little damn minds. The internet is cooking your mind that no truth can even penetrate that wickedness. You will love to sit at YouTube all day and watch YouTube or something silly and foolish. It is frying your damn minds. It's cooking your mind. You becoming distant from Yah. You get excited about the damn internet. But you don't get excited about Yah. You get excited about some folly on the internet, but you don't get excited about showing the beauty uh, of a bath in your home. You get excited about the internet, man, but you don't even show the beauty of the honor of Yah that shine and resonate from you. Something is twisted in our damn mind, and yet we have compassion, don't we? Yet we have compassion, don't we? The big woman had compassion to kill her babies. That woman had compassion to kill her baby. This woman, the daughter of Tizayon, she had compassion, but yet she sawed. She roasted her baby, didn't she? You give them over to every kind of vile, wicked thing it is. And you don't give a damn. You don't even care. Oh, get my baby's cell phone and she fries her damn brain. I don't care how much they tell you it's caused cancer and diseases. It affects your ability and your mental ability. They'll say, you love that damn mess, don't you? Sure you do. That is one of the most stupidest things that you see people walking with that damn thing. Don't have a pot to piss in or a window to throw out, and yet they think they're important. That is such an immature, childish, stupid damn mentality. You will never see me talking on Wanda. I don't do it. It's stupid. Anything the world does, that which is highly esteemed among the world, is an abomination. You see kids that I say, said to myself, look at them over there texting. And don't give a damn you see, watch them killing each other. You've given your children over unto the oven of hell, the oven of this world. And yet they, they show their veneration upon you, show you how nasty they are. Children talk to their parents, they don't give a damn. Their grandparents, their great-grandparents, they don't give a damn today. Because the daughters of Tizayan have lost their beauty, they have lost the compassion for truth and desire of truth. When I was there in Baltimore, my heart, it was appalling. My heart was sodden. When I saw the condition of the people, you can go to any city where you go. You see the loose women, you see nothing. You see the emptiness in their minds. You go to these communities in Charlotte, you see the same thing. You see the emptiness and the looseness. You see nothing there. You can go to L.A. and see the same. You go to New York City. You go to New Orleans. You go to San Francisco, you see the same thing. It makes no difference. You go to D.C., you see it. When I was there, I saw, I saw oh, yeah, I said, yeah, so sad. They don't even give the children activities, to even playgrounds to play on. Nothing but utter poverty and desolation. Because the daughters, your daughters that help, you have lost that beauty. And I won't take it back. You've gotten greedy. You're greedy as hell. All we think about is feeding the God of our bellies. We're greedy. We cannot have enough. We're wickedly greedy. You get offended. I don't give a damn. It's time to change that and to alter your attitude. We're like pigs that eat everything that is filthy. Isn't that what a pig does? And that's what we do. Throw the damn slop everything. You eat it up. You laugh and you clown. He said they're going to sod their babies. The pitiful mothers. A mother that is pitiful, how can she sod her baby? How she's going to roast her baby and then she's going to eat it. Hallelujah. They roast their own children in verse 10. They were their meat in the destruction. That's what they're going to feed on. And that's what they're feeding on today. Oh, my baby girl, she got to go on idols. That's their meat today. Oh, my daughter, she finished college. That's their meat today. Oh, she got married. That's their meat today. Oh, she had a baby. She did a dirty little filthy whore. That's their meat today. Oh, you ought to see my little grandbabies. That's their meat today. You understand? You don't have to buy it. I don't care if you don't think I'm compassionate. You're not compassionate. 
Is this Yah doing this? Is this Yah? Is he full of compassion? This is Yah. I will show you. He said the, the punishment, the punishment of the daughters or the daughter of Zion of on their iniquity, it is greater than the punishment of Sodom and Gomorrah. Yah said that this is not me. You got a problem, you take it up with him. He says in verse 11, Yahweh has accomplished. Does it say that? It says that in verse 11 that Yahweh has kalah, he has accomplished his uh, hema, his venomous poisonous, uh, 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 he has accomplished his fury. He has poured out his uh, harun, his fierce anger. You tell me that's Yah? And has kindled a fire in Zion, and it has devoured the foundations thereof. There's nothing for them to stand on. They can't stand on truth. They can't stand on testimony because Yah has devoured it all. It says that the Melechim of heaven and all the inhabitants of the earth would have not believed, would have not believed, even those in Yah's kingdom, for what is coming, what he see, the destruction on us now. He said they would not have believed that the adversary and the enemy should have entered into the gates of Yerushalayim. He said that even the Melechim, Cannot even phantom that even the wicked tenacity of Hasatan and the demons, the Shadim of power, how they have entered into Yah, Yerushalayim. I know that there's a physical Yerushalayim, but we're talking about the spiritual Yerushalayim. Yerushalayim simply means where Shalom is taught. And it is the Torah of Yah that he teaches us in al his Shalom, that we have Shalom in the Torah. Even the wicked, the adversary of Yisrael, will not even believe, the Melikim will not even believe that the gate or our mind has been opened unto this kind of destruction because we have not held fast to the shalom, the beauty of Yah's Emat. We have not walked in the steadfastness, the reliability of it, the assurance. They will not believe what destruction is coming. You cannot even believe what happens among the people of Yah today, can you? I see things, I say, how wicked. I watch the attitude, I say, how wicked. I see the unabashedly unkindness of people and those that think that they are kind. And I say, how wicked. How wicked is this generation? How wicked is it? But I'm talking about Yah's people. Is this the people of Yah here? Is this the people of Yah? This is the people of Yah here. He is not talking about the world. He's talking about his people. Hallelujah. He said, for the sin, the hata'ah of her prophets, her navi'im, and the iniquity of the kohen, the priests, they have shed the blood of the sadiq in the midst of her. What they do, they kill the men that are righteous. And those that strive to walk righteously, then these lying preachers and the lying prophets, they shed the blood of the innocent. They do all they can to destroy them. They don't want the so deep man, the one that deals with our sins and show us the compassion of God. He's going to destroy us in the hell. That's compassion. Because we will not repent. And he is not going to repent of his actions. And so what happens today? The false men destroy. The Sadiq they destroy. The just. They have destroyed the just ones in the midst. They try to dismantle truth. Well, you congregate. Well, he said that. Reach said that. But I know what it means. You don't know a damn thing. So you try to destroy the Sadiq. You try to dismantle what is right. That's what it says. These are not my words. Yah said this. I'll read it again. He said, For the sins of the prophets and the iniquity of the Kohen that have shed the blood they have killed, they have destroyed, they have shed the blood of the just in the midst of her. They have destroyed the just ones. They have, uh, in their Kohen together, they have destroyed, vilified, spoken against the just man. The just messenger. They are spoken against him. I had an elder say to me, when men know that you're coming or men know that you're going to be in the vicinity, they won't come. And I know that. 
They don't like the way you talk because you don't have compassion. And these dirty people will rob the people. They will steal from them. They will sleep with their daughters. They will rape the young daughters. There's not a woman on the face of the earth, but that woman can say that I've laid hands on them. They can lie all they want to. And believe me, they lie against me that way. I'm not here to defend me. I'm here to defend y'all. But I'm just showing you. They have caused the blood of the Sadiq to be shed. They don't care. They come against, they speak against. They strengthen the hands of the wicked. They make the wicked bold and brazen in their actions and in their activities. Well, you know, Pastor Robbins, he did that. He did this and he did that. Damn you, wicked one. It's amazing you can tell me what I did, but you can't tell me what you have done. And yet we say we have compassion. We have compassion. Hallelujah. The true sign of any compassion, you judge when one is wrong, say, you're wrong, sister. You are wicked and you're wrong, brother. Uh, you're false. We don't find that today. No, you can show them what is right and you still can cover their sins. You don't cover their sin. Because when there is no, when we sin, does Yah speak out against our sins? Ask us a question. When we sin, does he speak out against it? When we sin, does he speak out against it? Sure he does. Is he full of compassion? That's why you don't speak up because you don't give a damn. You see your wicked sons and daughters, you don't speak up because you don't give a damn. You see them do wickedly before you, they don't give a damn about you. They have no shame, you don't mean a damn thing to them. And they do their wickedness, you don't say a damn thing. Your wicked little dirty thing. But yet they say they're full of compassion. There were mothers in the days with me when I didn't even know you until their dirty sons and daughters, no, no. And now they won't even do that today. They're those that listen to me, you that are sitting here. Hallelujah. I'm glad we're quiet. That's all right. Verse 14, they have wandered, they have knew. Ah, this is how the message is. They're wandering as blind men in the street. They have polluted themselves with sin. They have lied. The messengers have lied. Lamentations 5, 14, 4, 4, 14. They have lied. They have polluted themselves with dumb, with sin, with the blood of wickedness, so that no man can touch their garments. They are so wicked that even wicked men know that they have, and they cannot even garner any strength from them. These folks are in these whole houses, in these false gatherings. They know that they can't get anything from that man. They know that he has no substance. They can't even touch his garment. The woman knew that she, if she could only touch the garment of Yeshua, that she would be made whole. She knew that. They don't even want to touch their garments. They don't even want to be associated with them. These are what we call the messengers today. Because they have killed the Sadiq men, the righteous one. He said they cry to them. Depart you. It is Tommy. Depart. Depart. Don't touch them. I cry to you. Don't touch them. Don't even touch your filthy garment. You ought to hate the filthy garment of your flesh. Or the garment that you wear that has been spotted by your flesh. You ought to hate your filthy mind. How ruthless you've been. Has not prospered you at all. You got to be a stupid jackass of an individual where you can see your ways have not prospered you at all. I'll never forget it. I know she's listening. Uh, Sister Mariana. As she wrote me one day that even the great dissension in her home, she has called, and you have heard it, and how the inability for her to interlate with her husband and her husband with her. And when I said to her, shut your damn mouth, be quiet, just listen to me, so long to live with a man, be quiet, shut your damn mouth, and know the man, he may be listening today. He makes sure that she has what she needs. Rack is on. The system is set up. We will be quiet for you. He doesn't appeal from sending offerings. And she said offerings all the time. My house has changed. The beauty of my home. It has changed. Her husband, she has a sense she's getting older. And there's a, and there's a love that she's never known. But now because she's quiet, she can understand. You will never have a damn husband. You will never have one. And because she obeyed that. 
because she obeyed it. Or you, you get any man to lay with you like a beast. You'll never have a husband. And really because a man that finds a wife, he's one that fears you. You will never have one. This is a rebellious generation. You that think you got one, you need to learn how to be a wife. Are we not the wife of Yahshua? We need to learn how to be one. You see compassion with us? And every time we mess up, as many as he loves, sons, every son, he chases, he corrects, be time. He always correcting us. And because we don't give a damn about him, we don't know compassion, we don't want correction. And that's why we are so wicked. We don't want to correct nobody because you don't give a damn. You don't love. My mother, I said to the elder, he was confronting me about compassion. And so his whole logist or his conversation was, well, you know, there are those that think, well, so he laid the foundation to let me know there are those that think I'm not compassionate. And we need to learn how to be more compassionate. I said, I want to ask you a question, my friend. I said, my mother, she loved me. My mother would sell her last pair of shoes to make sure we had bread. And she was not a woman that knew Yah, but she would not abandon us. And that's a fact. I said, I want to ask you a question. I said, my mother would take the rod and she would whip my ass. Was that compassion? Did she love me? Or did she despise me? I said, Yah is going to put the rod on the ass of this wicked generation, his people. Did she love me? I said, she would take the rod to me and she would beat me. Did she love me? Is that compassion? You're not going to st stunt me with silly questions. Was that compassion? Sure was compassion. I said, it was great compassion. She loved me. She cared for me. My welfare was, were, was her existence to make sure we ate. We had a place to live. That's what she lived for. When she had to walk, she had to walk two miles one way to catch the bus. When she made $32 a week, and our rent was $15 a week, she found a way to feed her children. She found a way to keep a roof over her head. She did things that were wrong, but she found a way. She found a way to do that. Hallelujah. That's why when I would see, I would tell her the truth. I would speak truth to her. I didn't hold nothing back. Hallelujah, that's compassion. They wandered, verse 14, as blind men in the streets. They polluted themselves with blood so that no man could touch their garments. Uh, they cried to them, depart, uh, depart you. It is told me, it is unclean, depart, touch not. Flee away and wander. They said among the heathens, they shall no more sojourn there. Verse 16, the off the anger of Yah, has divided them. And it says this, Yah will no more, Nabat, he will no more regard them. He will not even pay attention to them. Why? They, Nasa, they did not consider, they did not respect, they respect not the person of the Kohan, they favor not the Zakain. They don't even respect the leaders today. When a woman cannot respect her home, how can she respect a messenger? They didn't even regard those that Yah had placed in the midst. So they would destroy those that were just. As for us, as for us, Yisraya, our eyes as yet fell. For our Hebel, our vain help. In our watching, we have watched for a nation that could deliver us. We're vain. We're watching for those nations, and we are a nation, individually and a people. We're looking for those to help us, and Yah say it's vanity. And they will not even help you. Yah says they hunt out our steps, that we cannot go in our streets. Our inn is near. I tell you, your inn is near. A day of fulfillment for the end is come. You can think that the end is not come, but the end is come. It is come. 
Now we're dealing with the compassion of Yah, that Yah would even suffer a woman. That we that would roast our sons and daughters, our daughters, our child, and then we would eat upon their flesh. We would give them over to the world, and then our own vain delight will rejoice in that. And our own vain delight, Yah commands you to train up. He commands you in your home to train up in a child the way that they should go. He commands you. He never told you to give your children to the wicked, to train up your children. He said they will not, when they're old, they will not depart. They will not depart from the ways of Yah. We keep them five years and we give them to the world to, and they spend more time with the world. With teachers and strangers and faggots and pedophiles. You wonder why they depart. They go to the world. And you say you have capacity, you don't give a damn. It is your own hell, our own lustful desires that we have to have this and to have that. And you don't have a damn thing. I've got me a house, you don't have a damn house. You make it a payment to your, to your master, man. You don't own a damn thing. You got a house, it's paid for. I own my own home, you don't own nothing. You're renting a house. I got my own car. I got three more years to pay for your own nothing. Get to the last payment and see what happens. That's how stupid we are. And yet we think we have compassion. We don't even have compassion on ourselves. That we will put ourselves in positions like that. We put our sons and daughters in position that they despise Yah. Because there's no power of his testimony in us. It's sad. It's pitiful. We're dirty people. I don't want you to care for me. I don't want your compassion, all right? I don't want it. I don't want it. Because without judgment, there is no compassion. Does a mother judge her child when she get ready to put the rod on him? On the child? Does a father do that? Why do you think he's putting the rod? Why? Because he judged their actions. And he's going to correct that. So that's what God does. His compassion, he judges us. He will kill us. He will kill your children. Let me move on. The question arose among the Hebrews, the house of Yisrael, Yah. If you say Yah is this way, then he is not compassionate. So there was this, this tumult arose in the book of Romans. Romans, Yah, book of Romans, quickly. This question arose against Yah's conduct. Is he sovereign? Can he exercise justice and mercy? Romans chapter 9, verse 13. It says this, Romans 9, 13, Rubia, as it is hatab, as it is written, Yah says, Yaakov have I love, and Esau have I son. So the question arose whether Yah was right, whether he was full of compassion. Thy we said he's full of compassion. But yet compassion has hate. He loved one and he hated the other. Did it say he was full of compassion? Did it say it was full of compassion? We ought to hate the garment. We ought to hate our pride and our arrogance. You ought to hate your haughty and forward ways. You ought to hate your ways that are not pleasing to you. You don't hate them because you have no compassion for him. And yet you will question the just whether that compassion is right. You will question what because uh, what rebukes what a correct one. Uh, you will question them, won't you? And say, she is wrong. She's unkind. No, you're the unkind beast. You're the unkind jackal. You're the unkind monster. Because that one corrected that one. That's the way we are. And you would think because of what is correct in the one, uh, and you just side with their wickedness, uh, that you have the passion, you don't give a damn. Yeah. Here a whole sister, and see a sister does wrong, she won't even correct her. You're a wicked woman. You're a damn dirty Jezebel. I don't give a damn who you are. If it's my issue, your issue, I call you a Jezebel. You're a stinking bastard slip. How about that? Every son that he receives, he chastens and he corrects. We have compassion. So they say, well, yeah, 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 he, he's got to love everybody. See, that's what this synthetic love tells you. He loves everybody. Damn lies. He's angry with the wicked every day. 
He hates the sons of Esau. He loved Jacob, he hated Esau. And so then all of a question the tumult, the people began to, they began to question. Even the Nabi, they say, uh, what shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness or is there evil? Is there an unjust deed in you? Is he evil? Is he, is he an evil one? Is there unjust or injustice with Yah? Is he injustice? Is there any unjust ways in him? But he hated one and loved one. Is he full of compassion? Is he still full of compassion? Yet he loved this daughter of yours and he hated this Jezebel of a bastard slip. Did these both come out of one womb? Did they come out of the same womb? And yet he loved one and hated the other. Is he full of compassion? Sure he is. So is Yah just? Is there any unrighteousness in him? Verse 15. Yah forbids. He is not that way. For he says to Moshe, this is what Yah says. I want you to hear it, people. You try to have mercy on whom you want to, but Yah says, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. And I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. Damn who you think he should have compassion on. Damn who you think. This is my damn your grandbaby. And I'm not saying that. And mocking Yah said, I don't give a damn what you say. I will have mercy on you and damn that fool. He's damned. I have mercy on whom I want to. And I have compassion on whom I want to. Uh, and there ain't a damn thing we can't do about that. Uh, we try to pray mercy on this one of compassion. Uh, Yah says, I want to tell you something. Yah says, I will have mercy on whom I will. I have mercy on Jacob and I kill Esau. I hated that dirty bastard. Uh, I have mercy on whom I will. Two that are born. Two unborn. Yet, having done no wrong at all. Have not sinned, but yet he loved one and he hated the other. He said, I will show you, Yisraeli, I love this one and I hate that one. I have mercy on whom I walk to and, and compassion. Am I full of compassion? So what a messenger speaks today, what he identifies the Esau's, we get this melancholy type of synthetic emotion. We want to have sympathetic with Esau. Well, I don't believe Yah operates like that. You don't know Yah. You have painted this delusional picture of him. He all said, I have mercy on whom I want to. I have compassion on whom I want to. I have my rachum on whom I want to. You can pray all night. It's not going to change my compassion. You can pray all day long until your head get big as a ball. It's not going to change my compassion. No whatsoever. I have it on whom I want to. They began to question Yah whether he was right in his assessment. You love him that one and hate that one. Yah said, I hate who I want to. You hate who you want to. You lie on who you want to. Uh, you do wickedly against that one and call yourself doing right by that one. Come on here, Yisrael. You know you do. You try to show this one favor and don't give a damn about that one. Uh, you might as well talk to me. Uh. He said, I have mercy on whom I want to. And I have compassion on whom I want to. And I'm here to tell you, Yisrael, you're not going to change it. That woman that sodded her child and would eat it, he said, she's a pitiful woman, she's going to eat it because of her sins and because of your sins. That's why Yisrael, you're eating their children. They're giving their children to the world. They're so damn selfish, they don't know how to live with each other and love each other and share with each other. They don't give a damn. They give their babies over unto the world to train them. You think the world going to train your children right? Are we that damn stupid? A man's a damn, they're dim. The whole shack, they're dark. We give our babies to the world. We trust the world with our babies. And we don't even trust the messengers of Yah. We trust our babies to the world, those that don't even know Yah, those that have no propensity of truth. We give our babies to them, we don't give a damn. You give them to the fire to be burned. Stupid generation. I don't give a damn what the world thinks of me. Yes, I'm going to say I don't give a damn. I don't give a damn what the world thinks of me. I'm getting old and I'm going to die. I don't have time to think what these wicked individuals, these immature individuals think. Hallelujah. 
I don't care. Yah's going to have compassion on whom he wants to. I'll read that again as I proceed. He said, I will have compassion. I will have chaman. I will spare. I will have pity. I will show my love. I will show my endeavorment unto that one whom I will. That's my personal agenda. Whom I will. You will have compassion on that one. You don't show compassion for that one. He said, I'll do it the way I will because you don't know and you don't understand. Hallelujah. He will have compassion on only those that he will have compassion upon. Yisraya, and that's the truth. Well, who's he going to have compassion on? Can I show you this in Dibarim? I will show you. Is this, is he full of compassion? Is he full of compassion? Is he full of mercy? Is he the same yesterday, today, and forevermore? Is he the one that changed not? That's why we sons of Yah are not consumed. He doesn't change that. There's no shadow of turning in Almighty Yah. And this is what he says unto us as a people. You, Yisrael, the nation of his people that have been scattered in this nation. You that will hear this abroad. Sir. This is what Yah says in the, in the book of Shemoth, in the book of Exodus. Sir. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, in the book of Tibarim, let me go there quickly. Hallelujah. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 1. It said, and it shall come to pass when we as a nation of people, hallelujah, that's not what I want to read now. Turn back to Shemoth, the book of Exodus, chapter 34, verse 5. I'll get to that. This is when he, uh, when he intrigued Moshe here in this verse, in Exodus 34, 5. And Yahweh, and Yahweh, he, Yarad, he came down in the clouds, and he stood with him there, Moshe, and he, Karah, he called on the, the name of Yahweh. And Yah passed before him and proclaimed Yahweh, Yahweh, the Almighty One. Again, he says, compassionate, Rahum. That compassionate only applies to Yah. Exodus 34, verse 6. He says, Rahum. He is compassionate, isn't he? He is favorable. He is hanun. He is long-suffering. Did I not read that what Dawid said? He is compassionate, long-suffering. He is abundant in kindness and truth. And this is it right here. This is his compassion. His mercy upon who? Keeping he nasa. He guards, he protects nasa. He guards just like Shema. Mercy for thousands. Forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, hata'a, and that will by no means clear those that have transgressed his Torah. He says, visiting. Is this one that is compassion? Almost sound in our natural thinking, one that is full of vindictiveness. He said, visiting the iniquity of the Father. That's why your father's got to stop being boys and be a man. Stand up by the guidance of your head. Stand up for what's right. He said, visiting the iniquity of the father upon the children and upon the children, children to the third and to the fourth generation. Is that compassion? Sure is compassion. He said, I will show mercy. I'm full of mercy and compassion. He said, I will visit the sins of the father, of their wicked ways as they defy the Torah, upon the children of even the third and the fourth generation. You tell me you hold something like that, your compassion is that way? Can I ask you a question? Do you hold things like that? You remember things that happened six months ago, six years ago, don't you? The folks who got... Messing their crawl, that was six years ago. I can tell you verbatimly what happened, but yet they can't tell you what Yah speaks to their wicked hearts. Yah says, I will have compassion on the children of those that fear Yah and that love his Torah. He said, I will curse their children to the third and the fourth generation. I said to the elder when I was there, I said, how is it now? I ask you a question. Is this compassion? The Yah says that he will visit the iniquity of the Avat upon the children that really hate him down to the third and the fourth generation. I said, is Yah still compassionate? 
Is he still full of compassion? Is he the compassionate one that favor his people? Is he still compassionate? And you tell me he's going to do that? Upon the little baby that has neither sinned nor done evil or right? Just like Esau, but Yahweh said, I'm going to sin the curse upon them. And I said, when one father denies him, the next denies it. It is almost like a ger generational thing that is inbred in that family. That they all are cursed. You will never see one come to the light of Yah. Their families, you don't see no one. Even as Zakin and Mahala Yah would say, that even have any kind of religious tendency at all. They hate any kind of truth. You will see the sons and the daughters are wicked and, and vile. And yet they say they have compassion on each other. There was a young daughter that called us yesterday. She hasn't been calling us over the years. And she said, said to my Ishaw, she says, you know what? She said, I live in a house with a bunch of people. Uh, my situation is that uh, I, I listen to Reak when I can. The way I found out about him, she's called us many times that someone had some of the literature from there. And they gave me that. And I went to the website to find it and to hear that kind of preaching. She says uh, that I live in this house that they're just a bunch of mad people. And I can understand the very agony that this young woman lives in. Just in the house of wicked people, no television blaring and whiskey drinking and everything. That's wicked. I'm not going to live like that. I'd rather go out in the woods and build me a brush arbor. And I will sleep in the woods. She will go with me. No doubt about that. We will bathe in the creek. I'll build us a house out of pine branches. I'll build something. I will not live like that. I'm not going to live like that. Not me. Hallelujah. And Lot vex his sadiq nefesh. With the filthy conversation of the wicked. When you have no problem dwelling with the wicked and pretenders, something is twisted in your mind. You don't know Yah. Hallelujah. Yah says that uh, he will visit the curse upon the children. Is there any kind of example of that in the renewed covenant? Turn quickly to Gileana. Hallelujah. The book of Revelation chapter 2 verse... 21 as he speaks unto the assembly of Titeria. Hallelujah. And this is Abel or Jezebel. Look what he says in Revelation chapter 2 verse 21. I just read that he says in Shemoth that he will visit. Yah says he will visit the, the uh, sins of the iniquity of the avat upon the children, upon the children of children to the third and the fourth generation. Isn't that what it says? Look what Yah says here in Gilgana. Revelation. Yah says, this is vitally important when we don't make shuv or teshuvah. Yah says, I gave her space to repent or her na'af or her wicked religious fornication, her self-righteousness, her idolatry, the esteeming of her pride or lifting her up. He said, I gave her time to repent. He's given us time to repent. When you hear the Torah, it identifies you. You don't harden your heart. You know that people say, well, he's preaching at me. Do you preach that at me? You are a jackass to ask that question. You ought to say, Todai Yah, if he preached to nobody but you. You don't understand Torah because whom Yah loves, he chastens and he corrects. So if you preach to nobody but me, then I appreciate that man. Yah Barak, you, I will kiss your feet. If anything, I want to wash your feet, man. That I am that valuable in the sight of Yah that he will say, damn the rest of them. I will show compassion just on you, man. I don't give a damn about the rest of them there. You are a jackass of a human. You are a wasteful piece of flesh. And that's the fact. Speak to me, Yah. I won't harden my heart. Tell me what jackass I am. Tell me how vile I am. Tell me how unclean I am. All of my ways seem right, but Yah ponders, he weighs uh, my value to him, he weighs uh, my whole substance, uh, and then he speaks to me. Yeah. If you don't speak to nobody, speak to me, Yah. Uh. That's why the husband man must be the partaker first. I would have that one day I had worked that garden when the first ripe tomato come, I ate it. Sure I did. 
The first broccoli cutting, uh, he was eating it raw. I didn't say to him, don't eat it. He said, sweet, wonderful, tough. He was a partaker. Y'all speak to me, speak to me. You mean your eyes are that compassionate upon me, you care about nobody with me, and you tell me how wicked and vile I am, speak to me. Tell me how cruddy and ruddy and wicked I am, yeah. Tell me how vile and how uncompassionate and how I stink like a dog. Tell me, yeah. I know you will take me to the fullest house and bathe me. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. He said, I gave us mace to repent, verse 22. Uh, he said, Behold, I will cast her in a bed, into a bed. And them that commit the same adulterous, the same spiritual sin. Uh, you go, that's why we tend to go to people to gravitate to us on our emotions. Uh, and we want to talk to them and tell them our sorrows and our stories. Uh, and we become bed fellows. We get in bed together. We lay together. You understand? Uh, Y'all said, I'm going to cast those that become bedfellows with you uh, into the same bed. Uh, and he caused the same bed into the same bed uh, with her in great tribulation, uh, except they repent from their deeds. Uh, he's warning us to repent. He said, I want you to change. And when one shoe, it is a change. You can see the walk different. You can see the attitude different. You can see the spirit different. You can see the light of their countenance is different. You can see what they present is different. You can see the differences. I don't have to draw from some kind of spiritual intellect. I can look and observe and tell what a man is different. I can look and tell when the word of God touched a woman's damn wicked heart. Walk like a duck, quack like a duck, you're still a damn duck. Walk like a fool, act like a, you're still a damn fool. I can tell. I can sense the beauty of the aura. I can smell the fragrance. I don't give a damn, you can talk all you want to say you change, but you haven't changed. He said, unless you should make repentance, unless you repent of their deeds, Yah says, I will have compassion on your children. Talk to me, Yisrael. He said, I will what? Yeah. He said, I will what? Yeah. Talk to me loud. Yeah. He said, I'm going to kill. I will kill. I will kill your baby, your taff. He said, I will kill her children. And he let you know with what death. Is he full of compassion? Is he still compassionate? We don't want to want to destroy our wicked ways, do we? We don't want to want to destroy the child or that child thing we have birthed in us, our childlike stupid ways. We don't want no one to tell us we're wrong. We don't want no one to deal with our failures and our faults. We don't want that. That's why with someone like myself, I know I'm, listen, I know I'm overweight by the standards. I shouldn't weigh as much as I do. I know that. We don't want no one to tell us that. I don't want my wife to tell me, you need, you need to stop that. We don't want that. We don't want that to tell us a damn thing. We're sunk and died in our sins and we don't give a damn. Like hogs, don't tell me that I get angry. That's the way we are. We get angry. I get upset. Look at you. And the first thing I say, well, look at you then. Isn't that so? Might as well be. Hallelujah. This man is brutally honest. Eh? Not a preacher. Not a false brother. So I always say there were many false brothers. They were false. You know they were false. You're not dealing with a false one here. We don't want legitimacy because we're not legit. We don't want legitimate compassion. Yah said, I'm going to kill our children. And he gave them time to make sure, didn't he? Change. He said, I want you to turn around from the ways you're going. From this day, you should turn. From your activities, your ways, your attitude, you should turn. I can tell a lot about a daughter Tizayin in her walk. I can tell a lot about a man in his walk. I don't even have to speak to the man. When he come into my present, I can tell a lot about him, the way he walks, the way he acts. I gave her space of time to make shub, to repent, to change, to turn around from her ways. He says, she didn't do it. I'm going to kill her children. The one that she's beautiful for with death. And all the congregation, see, he said, all the people of Yah will know that I am he. I am Yah which searches the reign of the minds and the living. 
I will give to every man according to your works. He said, you're going to know. You think you're getting by, but you're going to know that I search everything. I search the very rain. I search what controls your mind. I con search what controls your heart. He said, I search that thing you call compassion. He said, I'm going to kill your children. Because you have not repented. Our children are dying. Hell, look at our families. We that have birthed children, look at your sons and daughters. They're going back to every kind of devious, damn, wicked thing that is. He's killing them. He says you're going to pay the price for the works that you have done. For what you have done. You may think you're getting by. You can smile and think and make people think you're compassionate and nice. It doesn't mean a damn thing. Yeah, it's not going to smell. He said, I'm going to curse your children and the children, children down to the third and the fourth generation. I'm going to curse them. And when they bring forth seed, they're just like Esau. I hate them. I look at that and spit on it. I spit on it. I take no pleasure. Their bastard slips. They have no spiritual enlightenment. And these damn fools get their babies to the world. They let the television train their minds all day. That's wicked. You're not going to do that here. I don't give a damn. You can leave. If it's five of us here, I'm all right with that. You're not going to do that here. Not here. Period. You are free to leave. You're not free to do that here. You're not free to do what you think you're going to do here. You're not going in anyone's house and do what you want to do. You're not even going into the hood and do what you want to do. I said to, I said to this elder, I said this, I'm going to finish your day. I said, elder, I want to ask you a question. I said, even in the hood, in the most violent situation, there's a protocol how one walk, how one carry themselves. And even those cats that say they love each other, they will show compassion, they will do for each other, they will help each other. But when you turn the other way, they will show you their compassion. They will boom, 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 boom. I say, is that compassion, my elder? Do you call that compassion? And yet they will say, man, I love homeboy. I love him, but boy, you can't be snitching like that, you know. You put us all in jeopardy. You can't do that, man. We don't think that's compassion, see. And when I talk like this, then there are those that say he's not compassionate. He, he, doesn't, he doesn't love. Hell, they don't love. Yeah. Oh, I can get up here. So, oh, we need to love each other. We need to be compassionate. Just because. Yeah, Shaul, tell us to uh, show uh, brotherly compassion one toward the other. Hell, you have not become a brother. A bro brothers born adversaries? A brothers born adversaries? Sure they are. We must come around. He told us to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. Uh, we must become around unto each other. We must become uh, our beloved ones to each other. Brothers, there's always adversity there. I don't care how close they are. They battle, they fight. There's opposition. the same thing with sisters. Until we become friends. Yeah. Yeshua didn't say he was our brother. He said, you're my friends. Yeah. He didn't say, you're not my brother. He said, my friends. Yeah. My friend. You're my friend. He calls us his friends. Is this compassion? But yet he's going to kill your children. Because you have not repented. You have not taught them how to repent. You taught them how to be selfish and do every kind of wicked thing. Is this compassion? Is this Yah's compassion? He's going to kill your children. That's compassion. I want to show you an example of Yah's compassion as he speaks to Yisrael Yah when you make an offer. Let me show, what he, let, let me show you this quickly. Turn quickly to uh, uh, Leviticus. Listen to what he said. This is Yah. Now, this, this is compassion here. Yah, uh, Leviticus chapter 22, verse 28. This is what I want you to look at Yah. And even he considered the age of the offering, what you should do. He says this in Leviticus 22, 28. And whether it be cow or you, you shall not kill it with her youth both in one day. He said, if you're going to offer something to me, he said, if you got a cow or you, you don't kill the cow and the you the same day. You kill mama one day, and then you bring the other one kill it the next day. Then that's y'all's compassion. That's how much compassion he has. He's full of compassion. Come on, you, he said, regardless whether it's a cow or you, you tell me he has compassion on the beast of the field? You tell me that? If you're ever around when they knock a cow down, when Ak 
Shimri knocks the cow down. You, you will sense that it, it, is, it is a tremendous emotional thing. Because when he knocks that cow down, he's down. That piece of weaponry he got, when it hits it, it's down. And he knows how to knock them out. And once he knocks a cow out, it is knocked out. But yet there's a sense of quietness, you think. Because we're going down just like the cow go down too. Just like the cow goes into the dung of the reservoir and dust and dirt of the ground, that's what we're going back to, Yisrael Yah. We better understand the compassion of Yah. See, that's what happened. Even with Yeremiah, he cried like that. The Navim and the Arab men, they did not stand the way they should have stood. They were afraid of the faces of the people. That's why he told them, don't be afraid of their faces. Although though their faces be hard as flint, don't be afraid of them. Don't be afraid of their emotions. Don't care about their emotions, how they cry. Hallelujah. He said, whether it be a cow or you, don't kill them both in the same day. But yet, Yah says, I'm going to kill her children, just like he did in Misraim. He killed every firstborn. See how compassionate he was? How many firstborn can you have in one house? How many firstborns can you have in one house? Say loud, you say, Ichat. One. That's all you can have. He decides he's going to kill the first, the third, and the fourth born. He's going to kill the firstborn. See how his compassion is? But he killed them, didn't he? Is he still full of compassion? But he got the firstborn, didn't he? Hallelujah. He killed them, didn't he? Because he knew the grieve, and even though they were wicked, he knew how grieved they would be. Hallelujah. I don't care how they grieve, you still kill that firstborn or that thing that first rises up in them, uh, that nature showing you them. You kill it. You're wrong, sister. Son, you're wrong. Stop that, you're wicked. You said bloodless straight out there. Yah, did he finagle with this or he said it? He's going to kill her children? All right. We like to finagle and like to pretend. We like to put a little folly in there, a little clowning. That's what we like. We like to laugh a little bit and make a little jesting. And once you find someone that is full of jester or jesting, that is a fool. That is one that will never be sincere. That's why that is one of my pet peeves. I hate that. Especially, I love you daughters. I hate that in a woman. I hate that. I don't even want to hear my wife laughing. I don't want to hear because I know it's just foolishness. I don't want to sitting out there with the young daughters. All you hear is laughing, this consender of laughing. And I, don't, I can't handle that. I don't want to handle I can't handle that. I don't care if you don't like me. I really don't give a damn. Hallelujah. I'm going to preach this today, though. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yah warns us, and he warns us not to give ourselves over unto the God of our belly. That we persist with what rises up in us, and we offer our offerings unto that. He gives us an example here in the book of Shemoth 22. Turn quickly there. It's in the 24th verse. Just look back a little bit. Yah says, And my af or my wrath shall wax hara. It shall be furious. It shall burn. He said, I will harag, I will kill you with the sword. Is that what Yah says? Exodus 22, 24. He's talking to his people. He said, I don't want you offering up to these damn wicked gods. You don't let the name of gods be in your mouth. Damn the name of Jesus. And the Lord said, Baal. Damn it. You don't give man and those that say, well, you know, the Lord has been good to me. I will say, damn Baal. I don't deal with lords. I stop them from me with that. They, they don't mess with me. People don't mess with me. That's the truth. Isn't it amazing? I told my precious Ahot Aretha, and she called the other day, and she wrote last night. You heard what she said in the letter. You guys, I said, hold up, daughter. We're not gods. We're not fools. We're not stupid. We're not suppletants. And so she writes me and says, I went and researched it. And you were right. I know I'm right. Hallelujah. Because I know what the word God means. I tell that to many people. And one that is offended when you say that above all people, and I will say this, the nationality, when I deal with Caucasians, they don't like you to tell them that. And that's a fact. And there's a young man that works there in Sam's. You can tell he's a bright young man. Very beautiful. I like the boy. Caucasian. And so he says to my wife and I, you guys, I said, no, we're not guys. My gender, I am a man. Look at this. I said, I'm a man. 
that she is my woman, she is my wife, she is not a guy. She is not a fool, neither am I. Don't address us that way. You can call me do mad, don't call me a guy. About three weeks later, we were in, in Sam's. His line was closed. He beckons me, say, you, you all come here. And you know what he said? He wasn't arrogant, he wasn't full of pride. And I find that the nature of the nature of the white mind, it is arrogant, it is a mind of pride. I'm not gonna stop saying that. Everybody knows nothing and that mind knows everything. And he says to me, come here. Now, you can, I will take care of you. And he says to me, he looks at me with a beautiful smile on his face. He says, you're right. No, it's not, what the, it's not what I'm right. It was the linguist that this was the prescription of the word. He said, you're right. He said, I did the research. And you can tell, he's a college young man, probably got a degree. He's going to move up in the corporate. He's not there. He's just doing that. That's just the ground floor. He's on the ground floor. But that's, I see them all come through there like that. And next thing you know, they're managers. Three months? Six months? Oh, yeah, I got a degree from USC Chapel Hill, and I got one. My master said, yeah. So he tells me, he says, you're right. No, I'm not the right. It was the statement of the one that classified that word to what, what it defines. I'm not right. Yours right. I say, that's what it means. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. So what is written here is right, Yisra'ya. Yeah. Yah says, my wrath shall wax hot, and I will kill you with a sword, and your wives shall be widows and your children fatherless. He said to us, men, that we offer the offering in our homes that are right. The offering, the sacrifice, the praises. We lift our hands, we teach our sons. He said, if you don't, I'm going to kill you. And your children will have no father. You've been a dirty beast of a man. He said, I'm going to kill you. Because your offerings have not been pure. And they will have no one. You will not even have the ability to teach them the ways of Yah. You will not even talk on the things of Yah. When you get with them, you will be clowning. You will be laughing. You will be playing. You will be jesting. You will play video games and all that damn folly. He said, they're going to be fatherless. And we see what we call the street gang. These kids say, I had no father, I had nobody. So I came to the street, see, and that's when they go to the world for their learning because you have not taught them the ways of Yah. You have not brought them up in the fear of Yah. You not, have not strengthened your, your, your wife uh, that she would operate in the spirit of truth. Uh, when you are not there, then the laws are applicable that you have instructed your home uh, and she instruct them in the same way. Now when you leave, she's got them doing something else. Well, I know daddy say you can't watch television, but I got one here. Come on. It is right. Yah says, I will kill you, man. Is that compassion? Is that compassion? He's still full of compassion. Because I tell you, Yah will kill you. You tell me I'm not compassionate? Because I warn you to make shub, to make teshuva. You tell me I'm not compassionate? And y'all said, I will kill you, man, and make your wife barren. She has no husband. And give your children to the world. You tell me that's, that's not compassionate? You tell me a man that tell you that and warn you he's not compassionate with sincerity? And you see your brother, sister, sin and doing father, and you laugh along with them. You don't give a damn about them. You're a dirty beast. You're a wicked man. You're a cursed man. You're a stupid woman. You're a fool of a man. I'm not taking any superlative back. Any, any adjective. Say it loud too. I'm not taking nothing back. Hallelujah. 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 He said, I'm going to make you parent. No fathers. You said, I want to show you this in Libra. The only way that Yah is going to show us compassion, there must be a shoe, a repentance. When you hear the Torah, you say, woe is me, as in my days they would say, woe is me, Yah, a wretched thing. Just like that publican. Just like the, uh, the publican and the, uh, who is that, the publican and the, you all know what I'm talking about. Hallelujah. But he smote himself and said, Who am I? I'm a wretched thing. And we boast in ourselves to think that we are someone special. And we have some special things. You don't have nothing. All flesh is as grass. All our flesh. 
I'd rather be like Moshe. I remember one of the first things that Evangel Hartsfield taught me. He didn't know, but I understand it clearer every day. He says to me, Brother Roberts, he said, why do you think so many people love sin? I never answered him. I asked my wife a question the other day. She wouldn't answer me. I said, if you were given a million dollars for the answer, could you answer? And when I told her the answer, she said, I would have won the million because that's how I would answer. And I knew she knew. But he taught me something one day very vital. He says to me, son, I want to tell you something. He said, Moshe, he chose rather to suffer affliction with the people of Yah. That he brought this out precisely than to enjoy the pleasure of sin for a season. He chose to suffer and to be afflicted with Yah's people. To suffer ridicule in this suffer abandonment. Than to enjoy the riches of Pharaoh's house for a season. So we rather enjoy sin and misery in Egypt and eat at the flesh pots than to suffer. Yah's long suffering isn't. And to suffer with the people of Yah. I've watched it here. This house was full, wasn't it? Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. You can't tell me. I can look at their lifestyles. I don't give a damn what anyone says. And I can look at what I'm striving to do. Yes. There is a demarcation. It's either I'm wrong, they're right, or they're wrong, and I'm walking in the right direction. My halach, yarach, is right. Sadiq. Bottom line. And they're the pigs that are listening today, too. Some of them dirty pigs are listening. Sure they are. Well, I have folks call me, oh, I love you so much. Oh, don't tell me that. Ah. Then all of a sudden, they despise me. They don't like me. Because I deal with your wickedness. You don't love Yah because he deals with our sin. Is he full of compassion? Yes. Let me read this then. In Dibarim, Deuteronomy 31. Well, I'm taking a look from here and there. We're going to go to the book a little bit, all right? I'm going to finish this a date, too. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. chapter 30, verse 1. Yah says, and it shall come to pass when all these things, when the great agony of your sins fall upon you. Yah says, and the Berechiah and the curses, the Kel Kelala, which I have set before you. That's what he set before us. And you shall call them to mind among all the Goim. We are a nation of people scattered throughout the nations of the earth, where Yah, your Abba, has nadak. He has scattered us, he has driven us. Yah says here in Dibarim 30, verse 2, he says, and shall, if you shall return, or make shub, or teshuva, if you shall make teshuva to Yah, your Abba, and shall obey his voice, according to all that I've commanded you this day, he said, you and your children and all of your love, with all of your nest you can do it partially. He said, if you will hear my voice and make a change with all of your heart, your children, all of your mind, all of your nephesh, he said that then, then, Yah, your Abba, will turn your shabuth, your captivity, and have compassion on you. Only then will we change. Is he going to have compassion? I will return and gather you from all nations where Yah your Abba has nadat, where he has scattered you. If we will make changes, if we will change Allah the Torah to change us, and we will allow Yah to indict our heart. We will not be under the shabut, the captivity that we are under in this hour, in this wicked nation whereby faggots serenade themselves. Uh, and you are not offended at that. Uh, whereby the wicked, uh, they honor the most vile and the depraved things. Uh, and you feel comfortable with that. Something is wrong. We have not made teshuva. We have not shub. We have not. We have not been sorrowful. That's why we do things and we have no problem with continuing doing it. We make this pretense that we have made a change. Yah says, if you do that, then I will show you my rocham. I will show you my compassion. I will show you my compassion. That's why he said to Isabel or Jezebel, I gave her space of time to repent. Didn't he not? He said, I'm going to kill your children. I'm going to destroy them. Because you have not repented, 
then your whole house is in a damn mess. You know, it's one thing that Sister Mariana, you have heard her call, she has said it. So what I'm saying is her testimony. Even with her children, because she has made the shoe, the teshuva, even when her children come to her house, when Reach died, we so they get quiet. Everyone, they don't disturb anything. When they know the Shabbat come, they honor that. Even if you make shub, your children will know they can be wicked as hell. You don't have to say much. Your action, the sense of your voice, you follow them, follow them. They're not going to sense anything, but the same thing is in them. That's a fact. Hallelujah. Your sons and your daughters, your children will know when there's a true teshuva, they will be ashamed, they will be afraid. Your sisters, your brothers, they will know when there's a genuine change in you. They will know that. And they will be afraid to do certain things before you in your presence. They will not act a certain way. Your sons or your daughter will not talk a certain way in your life, in, in your presence. And that's the truth. You don't have to buy it. But it's the truth. Yah said, if you make teshuva, return back unto the way of life. Yah said, then I have compassion on you. And so that's where, a, that's where a mother puts the rods to the child's butt out, that they turn. My mother beat me to turn for me to turn. And then when I would turn, she would show compassion on me. She would make sure I had bread to eat. She would make sure that I, that I could eat. Hallelujah. Hell, even your enemies, you feed them if they're hungry. This is a stupid generation. It is stupid. Even my enemies, I would feed them. I would. Even those that despise me, I see them, they're hungry. Come on, man. Come on, what do you want, woman? Get it. Now, I'm not going to give you a hug. Eat. And this generation is so stupid. They don't know what the right is. They don't even know how to do righteous. You don't have to defend what's right. There's no law against the Torah of Yah. You don't have to defend that. You do what's right, you do what's right. This is a stupid generation. I'm appalled at the stupidity of the men and women. That's why I like to be a loner. I like being by myself. I do. I do. I like talking to me. I like preaching to me. I do that all the time. I preach to me all the time. Hallelujah. Yah says, uh, and have compassion upon you, and then I will gather you into my bosom as a chick, as a hen gather the chick under her wing. We're not gathered. We're scattered like beasts driven by our own vanity, our own lust, and our own desire. Because we have become so self-indulgent and so wickedness in everything that is wrong, we have no conscience of Yah. And the Nobi Hanak speaks profoundly here in Hanak Enoch 98.12. He says, Woe unto you who love unrighteousness. Why do you have tigva? How do you have hope or tigva for tough things for yourself? You love unrighteousness. Why do you have tigva or hope for things that are tough for you, but you don't have that for no one else? Why do you have that? Do now, do know that you shall be given over into the hands of the righteous ones, and they shall cut off your neck and slay you. You tell me a righteous man that have compa has compassion, he's going to cut off the wicked's neck? I'm here to cut off your damn fat neck. I'm here to cut your wicked head off. Yah says, I'm going to give you over unto the righteous. Don't you understand that wicked? Sir? This nation is going to be given over unto the righteous seed of Yah. And they're going to cut the heads off their babies and all. I know we think that is callous, uh, but that's the way it's going to be. Uh. When the hurricanes come, do they spare babies or mamas and daddies? Uh, do they spare the old or young? Uh, are these not all the treasures of Yah? Yes. They spare no one. Yeah. No one. Yah says, I'm going to give you over unto the Sadiq. To the ones that would judge justly, they would say, no, cut her head off. Oh, I know it sounds gross as the way we would think. Because we have been so, we have been so conditioned as to whom Yah is, to this damn wicked, faggot God. And the gods we have served in our way. That's why we're still faggotites. We're feminine. We don't want to speak strongly against those things that oppose Yah. We don't want to do that. That's why no effeminate man has gone into the kingdom. He's a weak man. He's not a strong man. He's an effeminate man. Doesn't mean he acts like a faggot. He's just a weak boy. He's not going into the kingdom. He said, do know 
that you shall be, that do know. He said, I want you to know that you shall be given over into the hands of the righteous ones and they shall cut off your necks and slay you and they shall not have compassion upon you. Well, that's in the book of Hanak. I'm going to read it from the, from the book in your lap too, all right? Yeah. I said, they're not going to have compassion on you. I'm going to kill you, damn wicked ones. You despise Yah, I'm going to give you into the hands of the Sadiq. They know how to judge. See, only a righteous person knows how to judge. You that are wicked, you won't judge righteously because you don't want your sins. You don't have compassion on you, you can't have compassion on no one else. When one judge you, they're showing you compassion. Yeah. Is Yah full of compassion? Is he made, does he make himself known by his judgment? Mishpatim, does he make himself known that way? Is he full of compassion? See, when one judge you righteously and tell you you're wrong, sister, brother, you're wrong. You know that's compassion. When one says, don't worry, you know that's a dirty beast there. That man is a dirty dog, don't trust him. What I tell you, well, don't worry about that. No, no, man, don't tell me. There's some agony inside of me. There's a rustling. Uh, there's a tolling in me. You tell me the word. And someone that doesn't give a damn about you, they will never judge you. Judge me. Hallelujah. I want to be judged. Hallelujah. We together with, with my ark. I don't care who it is, they judge. This young man right here said, man, you what? Don't pretend. Judgment, no man escapes that. Yah said, and they will not have compassion on the righteous. When a man is righteous, he will not have compassion on your wickedness, your sin. And we think we have compassion. My mother acted in righteous acts. She may have done it wickedly, but she did it in a righteous act. When she put that rod on me, she was righteous in all of her ways. I was wicked and I was wrong. And she will put that rod to my buttocks. And y'all turn me over into that hand to kill, to destroy that spirit. You understand? Yeah. Well, you stop some of the ema from there. Well, in my presence, when they take them, then they, they, they will get them. You may, she may have gotten by the day, but mama, she doesn't get by the three, four times down the road. So she'll make up for that one. She'll, she'll get it. Hallelujah. Give me the paddle, I'll break it. But that's all right, Mama, she may get by today because she was in my presence. But down the road, Mama shows her mercy. Down the road, she does it again. Then she shows her compassion. Then she put the rod to her, okay? Or oh, yeah. him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yah yeah. says that you shall not have compassion upon them. I don't want you to have compassion upon them. Who is he talking about? Hanak identifies the people. He's talking about here in the book of Hanak 90, 99, 99 verse 5. Listen quickly. He's talking about the woes unto the, those that are wicked, those that have sin against Yah. We know that sin is the transgression of the Torah. It says in Enoch 99.5, in those days, we're talking about the same days that Yeremiah prophesied of. They, they, the women, shall become pregnant. Are women becoming pregnant in these days? But they, the sinners, shall come out and abort their infants. Are they aborting their infants? Are the sinners killing their babies? Those are of the diaspora, those that, whose skin complexion is like yours, they have bought 2,600 babies a week. It is a killing machine. This damn twisted mind, plant parenthood, and their euthanasia, eugenics, the little dark skinned that women of your complexion, they butcher 2,600 babies a week. That's not talking about the Caucasian, just that alone. It is an industry of money. And they're making your, uh, your, your skin can, all of that out of the little baby's uh, skin and, and making you think and you feel young to move your wrinkles. These are mothers now, and they have compassion, don't they? He said, but the sin of the, the, the they shall abort their infants. Are we in that day? Are they aborting the infants? Are they killing the babies? They're killing the infants. And they shall cast them out from their midst. They shall also abandon their other children. Do they abandon their children today? Mammas go out to clubs to, and put their babies at home and put them to sleep. They will feed them or put drugs. They do that, don't think. They will give them sleeping medicine so they can go out and become a dirty hog. They put drugs in their medicine. They go shake their wicked ass all night long. I'm going to cry against it. 
That should never be named among the house of Yisrael. That should never be in your thought that you want to do that. You should never be intrigued with things like that. And they shall abandon their children as they, the women that have children at home abort, they abandon them, they go to satisfy their own damn wicked lusts. You understand? They do that. There are women that have come to this, uh, this nation here. They have lived in one-room shacks, and they have saved money. They have money. They send money home. I understand uh, the debilitated circumstances in, in countries. Uh, and when women do that, they can save enough money to go back to their home uh, and establish uh, a heritage for their children. They have come here. They have not come here to hoe uh, and spend money and show the ass of their many women that come here and do that. Uh, I'm reading what's in the book, Yisraya. You're offended, I don't give a damn. And you that look at others thinking that you got them, you are, you are worse mama than them. Hell, you go out and entertain a damn man. He give you something, you're Iraq with him, you're a damn Jezebel. I don't give a damn who you are. You don't look at your own damn self. This is a wicked generation. These lying preachers tomorrow are not going to talk like this. I'm talking from out of the book that you don't know what's in the book. The other says they don't have compassion. And why? Because they don't give a damn about their children. They abandon their other children. Casting their infants out while they are still sucking. They don't even want to give them titty milk today. They give them a damn synthetic milk. They cast their youngins off their breasts. They don't even develop love with their youngins. You know I'm telling you the truth. Yet they say they're compassionate. You wonder why our children have no compassion? Because the damn daughters have been ruthless and harsh. They don't care about the ass. They want to put pampers on their ass. My mother put cotton diapers on my ass. She trained me as a young child. I don't give a damn if you don't love me. They put pampers on the ass. The mothers have to get up. They had to change their babies. They knew what it was, and they had such a compassion and a care. Now the world say they can piss four or five times. When the baby Bush, the mother knew. Even a damn cow in the field got more sense than these things we call mothers today. When the little cow plopper, it will go lick and clean it up. You might as well get quiet. I don't care if you get upset. There's a way that seems right. It has removed the compassion. It has removed the care. You don't give a damn today. Put that synthetic mess on your child's little ass and wonder why they're having problems. You all say there's certain fibers you shouldn't even mix together. Cotton and linen, don't even mix it together. My grandmother and my mother would take O'Shea and have a one big pen and, and make that thing and put that thing in there. And that gave the mothers, they knew that they had to train you. They were trained their little children. Hell, they don't train them today. Four or five years ago, they still got on pampers. I'm going to preach. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. You that are listening, you may not enjoy it, but that's all right. You'll love me if you hear it. You know that I have compassion and I care for you. Hallelujah. This is what a sinner household is like. This is what a sinner woman it will do. This is what a sinner man. Abandon their children, casting their infants out while they're sucking. They shall neither return to them their babes. But I have compassion. That's what it says here. Hanach 99.5. When a mama take a baby off the titty and give her some kind of damn synthetic mess, for she is not compassionate enough to put a diaper on the baby's buttocks. That's which is soft and which nurtures the child's skin, put a pamper. And the baby piss all night, and she get up and almost piss running out the pamper. I've watched my no good of a dirty sister do that. And I look at her sons today, prison houses and drugs. And I'm glad my mother, you were hard on your mother, I loved my mother. When she was wrong, I said, you're wrong, mother. As a young man, 24 years old, I said, you're my mother, and I will honor you, but I am a man. And the book tells me that as you the head of your shoe, your shoe is the head of man, man is the head of woman. I'm your son, but I'm a man. I'm not like the rest of these boys you call boys your babies. I'm a man, mama. 
Hallelujah. They take the baby off the titty. They don't even wipe their buttocks right. They don't keep them clean. Nothing at all. The baby stink, little dirt, and their fingernails. They cast them out. They give them a bottle. They put pacifiers in the mouth. But look what y'all says. Isn't that amazing? That that woman that baked her baby in the microwave oven, you know what was in the microwave? How they really knew she did it? They knew she did it. But you know what was in the microwave? The pacifier. The woman put the baby in the microwave with the pacifier in her mouth. You do the same thing. You give your children to the world with a pacifier. Little babies need their mama. You send them off to these strange damn people and they're crying, Mama, I want to go. I go, Mama, 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 Mama. And these dirty bastard slips tell me I have no compassion. You will go to hell. They cast their infants out while they are still sucking. They shall neither return to them, their babes, nor have compassion upon their be beloved ones. So if you give mothers today, even I watched it during the time of my natural sister. That's when the diaper, I mean the, uh, the diapers of the, uh, what are those things you call, that became the trend then. Because in the 60s, I watched the mothers, I watched them wash those diapers. I, you, you got to understand, I was 15 years old at the latter part of the 60s, you understand? I watched the mothers wash those diapers. They would have enough. The baby bush, they would wash it right then. Hang them in the house, they would hang them out. Many countries, they don't have no papers for their babies. It gave the mother the acute attentiveness and the awareness of the child. That's what Yah does with us. And they will wash those peppers out and keep them ready. They will always, they may put a little plastic covering over the child so it wouldn't wee and get the little bed wet. But that's what they did. And I watched in the 70s and the 60s, they were doing that in the community. You will see diapers in the 70s, the girls began to pop babies like flies. They began pampers and everything, and that's it. And now the land feels that they're never dissolvable. They do not ever return back to any kind of organic form. They're just there. You know something ain't right, Yisrael. You can take that old cotton diaper, throw it on the dung pile. It will eventually, it will eventually return back to its natural composition. It is synthetic. It's false. Yeah. And I want my natural sister. Take the baby off her titty. Never put the baby on her titty. Give her the similar. Get the welfare. Put that in the child. And their minds are messed up today. She has never returned to her children. They don't give a damn about her. She's living in New Orleans. And they everywhere. And prison and everywhere. And one day she told me, you ought to whip him. I said, I'm not whipping that hard-headed fool. It was time you should have whipped his backside when I told you. That. No, you don't touch him. And now he's running you out of the house. If he will put you in jail, you think I'm going to touch him? I said, I don't give a damn about him. You do what you want to with him. I won't touch him. And I did not touch the fool. And all he's been is in prison. I saw his natural daddy one day. He said, you know what? David, that boy, he rose up in me. And his daddy can't hardly walk. He said, rose up in me. Yeah. Rise up in me, big boy. That's what the book said. Now you don't need to look at anyone else. You need to look at you. Yeah. Hallelujah. While they're sucking, they shall neither return to their babies. They put the ball in their mouth and lay them down on the bed, don't they? That's what they do. Nor have compassion upon their beloved ones. And you're talking about having compassion on me. You're talking about you know compassion. You have put the sucking bottle of this damn disease in your baby's mouth and your baby is diseased up from the child you begin to impart the strands of death and diseases in your baby with this synthetic form of milk and you never go back to that child and you have no compassion you don't even know how to tend to one and you tell me you have compassion you have no compassion hallelujah Hallelujah. No fathers in the 60s and 50s didn't waste money on nothing like that. Because they gave the mother time. Her place was the home to take care of the children. Hell, the day mothers, they at home, but they're on the internet all day. They're Facebooking, they're Twitter, 
uh, what is that? Twitter, Twitter, and they are they they are, they are on the telephone. They are texting all day long. Baby just crying, pissed up and wet up. They're texting. They on Facebook, getting their Facebook right. They on MySpace. What a wickedness! I would never touch any damn thing. That's wicked. The world love it. You know that it is wicked. Hallelujah. You know it's wicked. Anything that is a holy seem in the world is an abomination to Yah. Hallelujah. 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 And our nature is not like the nature of Yah. There's a contrast there. That we speaks of Yah's nature here in the book of Tehillim 78:36. There are those that will write me because they won't like what I say, but that's all right. I've learned this way that I'm going to have opposition. I watched that in the midst of me. Men they say they love me. And then uh, when the word began to cut on them, I watched that with one that said she loved me. And, and yet all of a sudden something is wrong with the preaching. No, it's something wrong with you, Jezebel. Something wrong with your heart. You're wicked. Hallelujah. Yeah. Then we said this in Tehillim 78, 36. It was Muba the Ruach. He says, no, nevertheless, they did patah, they did flatter him with their mouth. We've never flattered Yah, do we? We never say to Yah, oh, I love you, I love you, Yah, I'm going to serve you. I hear some times in here, some of you crying out, and we cry out at times and sing. Yet when I watch as I see it, opposite manifestation. So we flatter Yah, we speak patah, we speak lies unto Yah, what we do. In essence, we speak our mind of persuasion, thinking we're going to persuade him with their mouth. And they lied to him with their tongue. You've never lied to Yah. We've never flattered Yah with our mouths. And we've never lied to him. Most people, who are, we are people that until we are confronted with our actions, we will say, oh no, I've never lied to Yah. He said, they lied to me. They have, they have spoken flattery, how much they love me. I don't even like people to tell me they love me. I don't, Yisraya. I want my ark to know that my heart is real with him. He'll know when he embraced me, he will feel the heart pounding. He will know that. He will sense it from my bosom. I don't want the words to speak it. I want my bosom, I want it to come from my shot, from my breath. And my heart speaks it. You understand? He said, for their love, their heart is not right with Yah. See, your heart is not right with Yah. Neither were they true or they were steadfast in the covenant of Almighty Yah. It says, but Yah, but Yah being full of God, of compassion, Rahum, always Yah's compassion, of mercifulness. He said, but Yah being full of compassion, forgave their iniquity and destroyed them not. Yes, Rabba, Mire, a time. Yah, he turned his anger away and did not stir up his wrath. Why? For he remembered that they were but flesh, they were bazaar, they were bazatsa, a ruach that passed away and come not again. The only reason he has not destroyed us because he knows that we're nothing but flesh. We are breath of life that once we pass away, we are not coming back again. There's a resurrection, but not in this form. Not in this form. He knows, but we're flesh. That's why he constantly judges us and corrects us. He knows what the frame of man. He knows the mind of man. That's why we need him to correct us. We ought to, we ought to rock him for correcting us. He's full of compassion. Many times he wanted to kill us. And he said, they're weak. But his compassion always comes to an end. When he see there's no repentance, he gives us chances. When he said they're hardened, hearts are hardened, he's going to kill us. Is it compassion? Sure is compassion. It is still compassion. Let me show an example of this great compassion. Yah's full of compassion. He says that many of times he would have killed us, but he did not, right? With that weed. Then let me show an example where he says no more. The book of Yeskel, Ezekiah, Ezekiel, chapter 24, verse 12. Hallelujah. 
He talks about the fate of Yerushalayim here, Yisrael. That's what this, if you read the entire chapter, you will see her sins, her wickedness, her vile ways, her great wickedness. And this is the state of us. Yerushalayim is the city of Shalom, where Shalom is taught. And our minds, our Laba should be the place where his Torah gives us Shalom. That's what he should. And the Nabi says here in Yeskel, Ezekiel 24, 12, he says, she has wearied herself with to whom? She has wearied herself with lies. With her naughty ways of lying, we weary ourselves with lies. We lie to ourselves. We lie to each other. We're pretenders. And we have wearied ourselves that lies are not even a factor in our lives. She has wearied herself. She's talking about Yerushalayim. He's talking about her. He says, and her great, her rob, he calls it, does it say scum in your book? Yes. With a scum. Her great hella, her scum, her diseases, were not forth out of her. It's all in her. Her scum shall be in the fire. Yah says, in her filthiness, in her tumah, her vile, unethical ways, he said there is zima, there's lewdness there. There's every kind of wicked, mischievous plan. She lays up on her bed and plan out her wicked activities. Yah says, because I have purged her, I have made her cleanse of her disease, I have purged you, and you are not purged. Yah says this, you shall not be purged from your filthiness anymore till I have caused my Chama, my poisonous, venomous terror to rest upon you. He said, I'm not going to clean you no more. He said, I've purged you. We are cleansed by the hearing of the Torah, by the word of Yah. He said, I've purged you. I have shown you your wickedness. He said, I'm not going to do it no more. It's like the parents say, I throw up my hands. I'm done with you. I am finished with you. I don't give a damn what you do. Yah says, I don't give a damn what you do. I'm going to cause my terror to rest upon you. I'm through with you. We think, we've been taught, well, we can continue to sin. When a man comes to the knowledge of truth, when he's laid his hands to the plow and turned his back, you're not fit for the kingdom of Almighty Yah. He's not going to have pity on your sons and your daughters. Or they get right one day. Hell no, they're not going to get right. If y'all ever put something of urgency in my heart, even though I was ignorant, I watched my natural brother, a man that was a prolific teacher, a man that I would sit under his feet, down at his feet. The man had a gift that was profound. He could teach out of this book like no other man that I heard. I recall Evangelist Hartsfield. I didn't even know what a teacher was. He said to him, Brother Roberts, I'm telling you, I've traveled the United States, but I've not heard a man that teach from this book the way you did. He, he was a teacher. I would not just, please, teach me anything. I don't care what it is. I would go and sit in his home at his feet and stay for hours just for him to open the book. He would say, baby boy, I'm tired. I said, I know you're tired, but just open it up and say something. And that's the truth. I'm not lying to you. And I watched this man turn away from Yah. And if Yah ever called something to rise in my bosom that night. And the words were precise in my mind. If he gets up, he will never get back. And I watched that man as I prayed for him one day. He weeping and crying. And he was beating me on my chest with his fist like that. They were smoking weed in the neighborhood. They were drinking beer. And all of a sudden, everyone just dispersed. And I began to pray because of my heart for my oldest brother. I loved him. Still care for the man. I will not compromise with him. And these were his words. I try, but I can't get back. I get over what hurt. And then I... See something greater. He said, I tried, I tried, I tried, and I can't, I can't. He said, that's why I drink and drink and do drugs. And now at 63 years old, he is a debilitated man. 
Sad. Last year, my natural sister called me. Tell me he was in the hospital. I answered the telephone that night. It was late. She says to me, do you want to speak to him? I said, not really. I really don't. Well, he is your brother, I said. Who is my brother? Who is my sister? Who is at the house of Yisraya? She would just talk to him. I said, okay, put him on. He picked the telephone. He picks it up. Yeah, man. I said, how are you doing? I'm doing fine. I said, excuse me, okay. I just, your sister wanted me to say something to you, but that's fine, all right. You, you take care of yourself, all right? Yeah, yeah. I got to go anyway. That's what he said to me. That is, that's what he said. Because as he began to see me grow in the knowledge of Yah, he began to come against me fiercely. And he called me everything but a child of Yah. He called me a mother seducer. He called me a bastard. He cursed me. Lord, if you want to call that a curse word, he spoke to me in a way that was not even recognizable by him because he never spoke to me that way. Never. And I said to my friend, you better be glad that I'm a man that even in all of my ignorance, I didn't say it that way, but I know the mighty one. Because if it wasn't for that, boy, I would break you in pieces. There's nothing you can do with me. Nothing you can. So they're not just coming back like you think. He cut them off in the wilderness by the tens of thousands. And they didn't get back. When they rose up against this messenger, Korah, Dathan, and Abiram, it Yah killed, he opened the earth to their little babies, their tab, their servants, their wives, the children, they all went down into the gates of Sheol, hell, a lion. Is he merciful? Sure he is merciful. We have been taught the synthetic form of religious whoredom. And we think that Yah is just going to continue to serenade us and say, stop, stop, stop. No. When we hear the warnings of Yah, we don't go any farther. When you hear that train, if you're driving, you come to a railroad track and the, and the railroad blocker is not down, you hear that train, it sounds, you can hear it for a mile. You can hear it. Now a fool will try to beat the train. And you will see many die that way. But a wise man, he will bag back and say, uh-uh, I'm not going across that track. So when Yah warns you, you don't proceed any farther. You stand still. You stand still to see the salvation of Yah. You don't move yourself from that position until uh, he calls you to progress. Uh, in knowledge of his truth, you allow Yah to deal with you right there. He said, I purge you. You won't hear me. He said, I'm not going to purge you no more. No more, Yah says. He said, you shall not be purged from your filthiness. Did he say no more or any more? What does he say there in, yes, yes, girl, Ezekiel, what do he say? What did he say? Come on. He said, anymore. So is there a chance you're going to be purged? If y'all says you shall not be purged anymore, there is no chance that you're going to be purged. There are those that you control you want to, you're not going to purge them. I'm not going to waste y'all's time with a rebellious, hard-headed generation. You go on, get away from me. He said, you're not going to be purged anymore till I cause my fury, my anger to rest upon you. I, Yahweh has spoken. Did he speak this or is this yes, girl? Yah said, I have spoken it. It shall come to pass. And Yah said, I will do it and I will not go back. I will not go back. Neither will I have mercy. Neither will I hoots have pity, neither will I have compassion on you. I will not even look upon you, neither, Yah says, will I not harm. Neither will I have this sorrowfulness that I am taking you to the hell because you have caused me hell. He said, according to your ways. So he's going to reward us according to our ways, isn't he? According to your ways and according to your doing. That's why we love to blame someone, don't we? He said, these are your ways and your doings. Shall you be judged? Says the sovereign Yah. We don't want to say that. Well, everybody's against me. No, you're against Yah, you stupid man. You silly woman. You're against truth. 
You're against what Yah commands. So you want to try to blame you. It's your doings that have put you in the position you're in. Your agony is coming from your own damn wickedness, your sins, your own wicked ways. It's not someone else's. You want to justify yourself and, and put it off on someone else. They are wrong. No, you're wrong, Jezebel. You're wrong, fool. Stupid man. You think you have compassion. You don't have compassion. You think you love and you don't know how to love. You think you love someone. You know why he's going to do this, don't you? Do it if you all despise Yah's truth. Don't even answer. There's no one here to despise the truth, I know. Oh, I know how self-righteous we are. You would say, oh, I don't despise this truth. But this is what Yah says here in the same book, chapter 20. Yah says, uh, this is why this is coming upon us. He says in chapter 20, verse 16, because they, is that singular or plural? They is plural. Ezekiel 20, 16, because they must ask, because they despise. Have we despised Yah's truth? His messengers? Sure we have. Because they despise my judgment. We despise. Who in here loves judgment? Don't raise your hand. We despise judgment, don't we? That's why we don't judge. That's why we don't make, discern. We do not judge the matter because we despise it. You find people that cannot judge anyone. They don't want nobody to judge them. That's why I judge. With the same judgment I judge, it shall be meets unto me. You find a coward that will not judge someone because they don't want to be judged. You find a dirty beast of a slut, of a bastard slip of a man. I'm using the words that they will, that they will make an impactual importance in your mind. They will never judge anyone. When you find these bastard slips of men, call themselves preachers, will not judge because they don't want to be judged. They don't want to be exposed. I judge hard because I want y'all to judge me hard. Judge me, Yah. Correct me, Yah, in your judgment and not in your anger. Do you want to be corrected? Is correction compassion? Is correction compassion? It is, isn't it? Is correction compassion? It's judgment. And he judges. Hallelujah. That's why, Yerubiah, correct me in your judgment and not in your anger. See, when he gets angry, he's going to burn you to the gates of hell. You understand? Hallelujah. He says, because they despise my judgment, we hate the judgment. Ezekiel 2016. That's why he destroyed them in the wilderness. And we're in the bit Midbar too. We despise the judgment of Yom, his justice, and walk not in my hukha. I say, don't do that. He gives a limitation for the husband. He gives a limitation for the wife. He gives a limitation for the children. Wife, you never go beyond that limitation. You don't run your mouth. You be quiet. It is the beauty of the quietness of your quiet and meek ruach. Whereby the man will be yasha. You're quiet. Be quiet. You don't try to instruct him and command him. You don't have to show him where it's wrong. You're wrong. You're not the head. It was the woman that was caught in transgression. Not the man. That's what the word says. It was the woman that was deceived. That's why these whole houses are filled, filled with women, are they not? Yeah. And the men are in there just laying, the women. You got a little whole house where one man laying, two or three women in the same place. And they know about it, and they're mad at each other. Instead of kicking that dog in the head, they're mad at each other. And they get mad at each other. She took my boyfriend. If you got a boyfriend, you're a silly hoe. You got a girlfriend, you're a jackass of a man. That's right. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. That's all right. I intend for you to be uneasy, whoever you are. I don't care who you are. Yah says this. He says, listen to this now. They despise my judgment. They walk not in my statutes. And they polluted, they chala, my Shabbat. They say to hell with what Yah has ordained. I know it's the Shabbat, but I'm going to do what I want to do. I'm going to do other works. No, you're wrong, man. Woman, you are wrong. He said, they have profaned, they have polluted my Shabbat. 
for their love went after their idols. Nevertheless, he said, my eyes spared them from destroying them. Neither did I make an end to them. See, he did not make an end in the wilderness. But I said to their children in the wilderness, walk you not in the statutes of your fathers, of your Allah, Neither observe their rulings. Don't judge the way they judge. Don't do what they did. Nor torment or defile yourselves with idols that you esteem yourself. You lift yourself up. You lift your children, your wealth, or what you perceive as wealth up. He says, I am Yah. You are about walk in my statutes and keep my. See, we must keep the judgments of Yah, the Mishpatim, and do a saw or fashion yourself. Do them. And he says, I want an Kadash set apart my Shabbat, my Shabbat. And they shall be a sign between me and you that you may know that I am Yah, your Abba. He said, my Shabbat, my feast days, it is a sign between you and me. He said, well, have compassion. Just don't do what your fathers have done. Don't do what your dad has taught you. As my mother say, I will lay my religion down. You can't down but you can't lay truth down he said don't go the way your daddy went don't go the way your mama went I want you to keep my Shabbats my feast days he says and I will spare you I will be with you well we don't even do that right we get legitimately honest about the matter we must do that we don't keep the Shabbat that daughter up there in Indiana her husband does not even do anything to cause her not to keep the Shabbat or the feast days he lets her do that. He doesn't fight her. And they, it was always contention in the house until one day she writes this messenger or calls me. Well, what do I do? And she was telling me her situation. The first thing I said, shut your mouth. Open. Just be quiet. Don't say anything. Just, just take my approach for a moment. Just don't say anything. Let him talk. Let him raise all the hell. You just be quiet and watch what happens. It wasn't three months later that she could see the whole ambience of her house change. Everything began to change because she obeyed the messenger of Yah. That's why I don't like talking with silly women and men. Well, well, what if I, no, no, man, just hear me. I don't need you to talk. I've seen your situation a thousand times. Just hear what I say and you will see that there will be a remedy in your life. You understand? I've counseled many of the married and I know what the problem persists. Hallelujah. Just be quiet, woman. And you will see a radical change. And she told the Yah for that. And her faithfulness is it's astounding. It is. Oh, the pigs don't want to hear that. They get mad. There are women that are like brute beasts and men that are like pigs. There are women that are brutish and piggish and men that are like dirty dogs. They are. They're cowardly. They're boyish. I like the man thing. I like to be around a man. You understand? I love the beauty of the daughters of Tizayon. I love that. I love beautiful daughters. I love their walk. Not the mincing of their ass, the tightness of their dress. I love beautiful daughters. I love to see the beautiful daughters that dress the beautiful colors. You know, not something squeezing you tighter than the drum skin. No. You got rolls, then hide the rolls. I hide mine. Come on. Hard thing. You got a gut, man, hard. It wears something where it's not seen. You do like me. Hallelujah. Not that. But I love to see the beauty of the daughters of Jezebel. I love to see their beauty. I love to see their walk. It, it makes my heart fat. I rejoice. I can't stand to see a raunchy, wicked, Jezebel spirit in a woman. And I've been around a while, and I know. You understand? And I see it. I know it. You never draw attention to yourself. You always be quiet, daughters. Do things in a way that nobody sees you. Can I ask you a question? If you go to work late every day, will everybody see you? If you come to work late every day, will everybody see you? If you come before everyone gets there, nobody sees you, do they? Huh? Because there's something there. There's a genuineness there. Because you care. When I went to work, I was the first one to the job. I was there at 6 a.m. When I got there, no one was there. Nobody. And if I came in after everyone said, man, what's, what, what's wrong with you? You're late. Come on. Is y'all coming on time? Or shall it be late? 
Hallelujah. I'm not taking anything back. I don't care if it offends you either. Hallelujah. Chapter 9 of Yeskel. Hallelujah. We got to get this mindset, Yisrael. When we get this, Yah will send, he will raise up the messenger to identify his people. We got these boys raising themselves up, but they're not identifying the people of Yah. This is what Yeskel says here in, in Ezekiel chapter 9, verse 4. Hallelujah. And Yahweh said unto him, this is what Yah says unto the messenger. He says unto Ezekiel, this is what I'm going to do. Is Yahweh full of compassion? I want to read this in Ezekiel 9, 4. And Yahweh said to him, go through the midst of the city, throughout the midst of Yerushalayim. He said, I want you to set a tab, a mark, or it will be a sign. And this sign is an exception of judgment. That's why Yahshua said that when the Ruach HaKodesh shall come, it will, it will be the sign of Yah that we exempt from the judgment or the terror of Yah. I want you to hear this, Yisrael. He says, uh, and set a mark upon the foreheads of who? Who? The men, the men. Set a mark upon the foreheads of the men, not the women. Because the covering of the woman's house is the man. He said, upon the men that achnach, that sign. And that achnach is like the cow. When the cows don't have hay when it's cold, you can hear them. They will moan. That's the kind of sign that he tells him. That's what achnach is. He said, I want you to groan like a cow. When these cows do not have hay in the winter, they will, all of those cows will groan and groan until they get hay. That's the cry the messenger shall make. He says, I want you to achnach. And that I want you to knock, I want you to groan and cry, I want you to lament. For what? For all the abominations that are being done in the midst of my people thereof. He goes on to say in verse 5, And to the others Yahweh said, In my hearing, my ozen, I can receive this revelation, what Yahweh was saying. He said, I want you to go after those that mark them. The messengers, the melach that mark them. I want you to go after him through the city. He says, and I want you to nakha. I want you to kill every I want you to kill. I want you to attack. I want you to destroy. This is the one that's full of mercy, isn't he? He said, I want you to conquer. I want you to ravish. I want you to subjugate them. I want you to bring them down. You go after them. He says this, and let not your eyes whoosie. Let, it, let there be no pity. I don't want you to have compassion. I don't want you to spare. He says this, now this, oh, this is cold, isn't it? He said, neither have hus or pity. He said, I want you, in verse 6, he said, I want you to kill. I want you to harak. I want you to pierce with the sword. I want you to kill early, early. Oh, the zakane. Ah, uh, she's old and she's moving, she, but she's the wicked old Jezebel. He's an old man, but he's the wicked, dirty, depraved, vile thing. He said, I want you to kill old. I want you to kill Bachor, young. And that is the young man. They're killing the young men today in the streets, are they not? He said, I want you to kill old. I want you to kill young. I want you to kill both best Ula the virgin because they're dirty. They say they're virgin because they haven't had a man, but they are dirty little Jezebels. They are sneaky. They are wicked. They are corrupt. They have no kind of sense of caring. They don't give a damn. They have no compassion. Y'all said kill the dirty little Jezebels. Because they will no, show no compassion on a man. Although a woman is a virgin, that doesn't mean she has compassion. That doesn't mean she knows how to love because a wicked mammy hasn't taught her how to love and how to be kind and affectionate to her husband. He said, you kill the best Ula, these dirty little whores. You kill them, you kill the best Ula. And he said, and Taf, kill the little babies. Is that a take of yours asleep there back, uh, Yosipia? Bring him here. I want you to see a Taf, you that's looking. God said, Kill him. Y'all, please don't. I'm going to have to stand in his stead. He's a happy little fellow. He's so nice. Look at this calf. Look in that camera of death for me. Look. Look at that. See, look, look, look at that. See this little calf? Yeah, you, you tell me to take a sword and to cut. You tell me that's compassion? Oh, man.
<laughs> you say kill and slay Harad Taf. This is the Taf, a little child. That's compassion. He is still full of compassion. Yeah. He's giving us time here, Daddy. He says, Daddy, repent and train him right. Bring him up to fear me. He's not playing. He said, I don't want you to spare one of them, but it's a little baby. He said, kill it. He said, damn it, kill it. And if the other half cry, kill that half. Damn it, if that half cry, we don't think he talks like that because, oh, he's cussing. You are a cursed, dirty thing. Y'all says, damn it, kill the bastard. I know you don't want to hear it like that. Split him in half. Say, damn it, pick that up and kill it again. You kill that, damn it, kill that. And we don't think he's that way. We, say, we, 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 we sympathize with our emotions say, that's cold. It's not cold. He made us and we not ourselves. He has given us everything that pertains unto life. He has set his son to die for, the, for our impugnant wicked ways. That's what the book says. Is that what I'm saying? You can't tie no emotions to that. Do little babies die in the hospital? Do little babies die? They die all the time, don't they? I was reading this morning that every year, because most doctors in the interim, in the residency, they work between 18 to 28 hours a day. How can a man work 28 hours unless he's on drugs, be cognitive? You ever stayed up all night, 24 hours? You're crazy. You're delusional. Quarter of a million people a year die every year in hospitals because of that reason alone. Because doctors are drugged up. They haven't slept. They're overextended. And they have to work at the residency like that for about four years. They're overextended. They're beat down. That's a lot of people, isn't it? And nobody says anything about that. No doctor gets charged for that. But yet we want to charge Yah with no compassion. He said, you hate me. And I'm going to show you what your hate is like. This is what, see what we, what we are getting is what we have sown. So if he sowed that kind of wickedness, when that son, when Yah say cut him in half, it's because he has sown that, because he has hated Yah. And he has set the curse upon his children, his children, children, down to the third and the fourth generation. That's Yah. You can question it all you want to. You don't have to lock it. It doesn't mean anything to him. He said, I want you to kill the old. I want you to kill the young, the blind, the crippled, and the crazy. I want you to kill the old ones. I want you to kill these little virgins that when they got their titties out, they said they're virgins. And everything you see, their titty nipples, they show on their buttocks and everything. He said, kill them, they're polluted little things. Oh, my little girl are virgins, they're little dirty little whores. Kill the young men, they're not worth a damn. You got the cities that drop in them like flies. I was listening the other day that true best of friends, he had him on his MySpace site. And the MySpace site, he was in this little gang, and the gang said he snitched. He said, kill him. He went and shot the boy in the head, kill his best friend. He was only 16 years old. You all say kill them. Kill the babies. Kill the daddy, the old man, when he holler, kill him. When he cry, kill him again. Damn it, pick him up and cut his head off. That sounds gross, doesn't it? We have, we have mistaken the compassion of God because uh, we have done him so dirty. It's almost like a man. He comes home from work and he knows his wife is a whore. Just like on last Tuesday, right here in Paisland, right here in the city, uh, the man, he knew his wife was sleeping with this other man. He comes home and he kills the wife. Poom, 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 kills her dead. Righteous judgment. No. I walk away from the slut. He kills his wife. He comes outside undoubtedly. Undoubtedly he had the pistol in a little small town like this. The police, the deputy sheriffs, they put it down. He didn't. And then they kill him. They kill him. He said, kill the old. This is not my writing. It's either you believe all the book or you believe none of it. Either you understand the compassion of Yah, what we call is compassion. That's why Yah says, uh, man, kill that dirty one. 
You kill, I don't care if it affects the children at all. You let her know she's a Jezebel. Let the man know she's a dirty bastard. Kill the house. Oh, the story of them coming out of Misraim is a little story, isn't it? But he killed the firstborn. When Yahshua was born, the same thing happened. They killed the babies. Are they killing babies today? It has all been prophesied, hasn't it? We're going to die, Yisrael. We better hear what Yah says. Hallelujah. He said, I want you to kill. Listen to this. He says, uh, old and young, verse 6, he said, Harad, old, young, both virgins, the little children, the women. He said, but come not near unto any who have the top, the mark. And he said, I want you to be gone here at my Migdash place. Then he began at the ancient men, which were before the house. He's going to begin with the men. We can play all we want to, ancient men. We can play all we want to, Zakim. You can cover the sin all you want to, but the day is coming. You can act like a jackass of a clown all you want to, man, but the day is coming. He said, I want you to begin with the man. He said, because this is in my house because they were cowards and they did not stand. The children are like that because, Daddy, in my days when the boy was out of hand, the, the, I don't care whether it was an elder, he would take the boy and spank his little buttocks and say, sit down. He said, I want you to begin with the elder. Start right there. They knew what was right to do and they did not do it. He said, I want you to be gone with the ancient men which are before the bed. And Yah said to them, I want you to tell me, I want you to defile the bed and fill the courts with the dead, the Kala. I want you to kill them. He said, go forth. And they went forth and they slew in the city. And it came to pass while they were slaying them. Just kill, say, I was left alone. He said, in my face, and I fell upon my face. What can you say to Yah? You can't say to that tornado that, and that, those tornadoes that happened, dropped and all that, to kill 143 people. You can't say stop. You can't say that. He said, I fell on my face before Yah and cried and said, Ah, Yah, listen, we better be glad. We better be glad. He said, Ah, Yah, will you destroy all residue, the she'areth, the remnant? Will you destroy that? He's going to say, the remnant. He said, in the midst of this terror, will you destroy the remnant of Yisrael and pouring or shafach out your fury upon Yerushalayim? Then said Yah to me, the iniquity, the ovon, of Beit Yisrael and Yehuda is exceedingly, it is me old, it is much, it is exceedingly great. And the land is full of wickedness, sin, damn. He said, the city is full of perverseness for they say Yah has a zab he has forgotten us he has abandoned us and and the earth and Yah sees not he doesn't see what we're doing I can do what I do and Yah doesn't see that's a sad mentality yes. well you think Yah doesn't see your wickedness yes. so Yah doesn't see me I can do what I want I can shake my booty I can do my thing I can go and steal from the people I can rob them there's nothing to rob us of there's no money here. Never been no money here as a whole, as a people. I've had nothing to rob you of, Yisrael. Hallelujah. And we say, Yah doesn't see us. He doesn't see what I'm doing. I can hide under darkness. No, you're not hiding, my friend. And for me also, my eyes shall not spare. Yah said, I shall not spare. Neither will I have chamal pity, but I will repay their way upon the head. Be not deceived, you are not mine. For whatsoever a man soweth, you're going to reap it. You're going to. Your greatest compassion is telling the wholeness of the counsel of truth. And don't pretend. If you love me, tell me the truth. Don't hide it from me. Let me know. I'd rather you let me know me. Take the hard knocks, as the old one would say, than for you to pretend that you love me and you hide the truth from me. Tell me, man. I don't want you to so stroke me and say, Yah's not going to do this. This is what he's going to do. He's going to repay us for our own ways. He said, and behold, the man, clothed with linen, which had the ink horn by his side, reported the matter, saying, I have done, as you commanded me. Makes no different how the babies cried. He said, I've done. 
as you have commanded me, God. Is he full of compassion or is that a lie? He is full of compassion. He is full of mercy. He is full of that. But he is not going to offer up his son and we trample on the foot the dumb of Yahshua and say, damn him? You can forget that, Yisraeli. You can forget that. It's not going to work that way at all. It's not going to work. If we walk in his obedience, then we shall receive the blessings of Yah. And then he shall spare us. I have a few more verses I want to close with. Hear this. In the book of Dibarim, Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 12. Hear this quickly. We must be obedient unto the counsel of Yah. It's wonderful to have those among you that have the wise counsel of Yah. Fool does not adhere to counsel. You find foolish men and women, they don't want to hear counsel. It says here in the book of Dibarim chapter 7 verse 12. Yah says, therefore it shall come to pass if you shalach, you hearken to these judgments. You understand we must hear the judgments of Yah, the Mishpatim. You hearken unto the judgment. He says, and I want you to nasat the Shema to keep and do them. Why? That Yah, your Abba, shall keep you, keep with you the Brits and the Hasid, which he swore unto your Abba. And he will love you and bless you. What? We must keep the judgments of Yah. If we do that, he will love us and bless us. He will love you and bless you. He will multiply you. Uh, he will also bless the fruit of your womb and the fruit of your land, your corn, your wine, your oil, and the increase of your cattle and the flocks of your sheep. In the land which he has Shabbat, he has sworn with an oath to your Avat to give you. You shall be blessed above all nations, all people. There shall not be a male or a female barren among you and among your cattle. He said, if you keep my judgment, we will not be barren. We will not be fruitless. We will, we will have much. We will multiply Yeshua and Yah because we don't keep judgment. Because we don't keep the statutes. We don't honor what Yah says. We're barren. We have no life in us. We look dead. If I had a mirror and put it before us and you see your reflection, here I've been standing here for a few hours and, and my feet, they're not, they're not hurting, but it's hurting because I'm standing here. But still, I have that energetic drive of Yah's fire in my bosom. He said, if you keep my judgment and do what I tell you, he said, you shall be blessed above all people. There shall not be a male or female among you, barren nor your cattle. And Yah says this, that I will take away from you all, all, all holy, all sickness. He did not say some, all the maladies, all the anxieties and the calamities as I take all that away from you uh, and I will put none of these evil madvate or these evil diseases of Misraim which you have seen and and know about uh, you shall not be overtaken by them upon you but will lay them upon all them that hate you he's full of compassion isn't he but yet Yah says I'm going to lay the diseases upon those that hate my house my people he's not Yah that's what he says. And you shall consume all the people which Yah your Abba shall deliver unto you. This is what he's telling his people. I want you to take them out. Destroy them. Is this Yah talking? Your eyes shall have no pity. Is that what it says? Whoops. We have pity on everybody, don't we? We think we do. Yah says you must eradicate sin. In essence, what he is saying here to us, that we will be a blessed people. You don't compromise with sin, the wickedness. You don't have pity. I don't care if it's your son, your daughter, daddy, mama. You don't have pity on their sins. You don't play with their sins. You don't let them do things that you know is an offense to Yah. When we do that, we will be blessed. You don't let them. You don't, you don't strengthen their hands in their evil ways. You don't give them strength to continue to practice their evil. Say, get away from me, pig. And that's just the truth, Yisrael. Yeah, he, say, he says this for you, for your eyes shall not have no pity upon them. He said, neither shall you go and serve the damned of a gods. Why? Because they shall be a snare to you. You should not have any pity on them at all, what Yah says. You don't compromise with them. He said, when I tell you what to do, and that's what caused the very fall of Shaul. He said, I want you to kill a God. I want you to kill everything. Everything. Kill the mama, the babies, kill them all. Don't even spare him. And yet Shaul did not obey Yah. 
And then the Navi of y'all say, come, what do I hear, the bleeding? What, what is it I hear? And he said, we kept the best of things. He said, where's the damn dog? He took the sword. He said, I'll kill him. He makes us alive. It is not ourselves we have made us. His compassion is not like what you think compassion is. And that's the truth. I want to close here from the book of Yeshaya again. Ezekiel. Yeshaya. Isaiah. Hallelujah. In the day of Yah, I want to close with this and let you hear this, Yisraya. Beginning here, chapter 13, verse 11. Yah says that he will pokad. He's going to punish. Are you there, Ezekiel? I mean, yes, scale Isaiah 13, 11. Are you there? Is this what Yah says? And I will punish the world for their evil. Does he say that? Yes. Did he lie? He cannot lie. He said, I'm going to punish the world for their evil and the wicked for their iniquity, for their Torah lustness. They will not adhere to the Torah. He said, I will cause the arrogance, the ga'un. Isn't that the fear of Yahweh when we began to hate evil? To hate our arrogance? He said, I will cause the ga'un, the arrogance, the pride of the pride of the proud, the zeed. Those that are presumptuous. When you find someone that is full of pride, they will talk very presumptuously. They're presumptuous. You say something, you know, well, I, I know that. Man, you, you can't tell me. Uh, well, <laughs> they're presumptuous. They're zeed. They're proud people. This is what Yah says. He's going to punish them. He said, and the proud to cease. He said, he's going to lay low the, the haughty, those that are full of pride, and the, and the tyrants of the earth. He said, I will make a man more precious than that of fine gold, even the man of the gold, or the man than the gold of the wedge of opera. Therefore, will I shake Hashem and the heavens and the earth he shall remove out of her place in the wrath, in the Ebra, the outpouring of Yah's great in the nation of Yah. That's how fierce his wrath is. That the earth and the heavens are going to be moved out of their place, Yisraya. He is the Abba of, 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 of hosts. In the day of his fierce anger, his haron, his anger, a man shall be as a hunted gazelle. He's going to run, but you're not getting by. And as the sheep that no man takes up, every man shall turn to his own and flee into his own land. Everyone that is found shall be killed, shall be thrust through. And everyone that is joined to them shall fall by the sword. This is Yah. He said their early, their children, their little ones, their children who also shall be dashed to pieces before their eyes. You all hear the warning of Yah? Is he compassionate? Is he compassionate? Sure he is. He said, I'm going to dash them to pieces before their eyes. Their houses are going to be spoiled and their wives, they shall be shagal, they shall be raped, they shall be violated because you weak, coward, jackass, jackals of men. We have not stood the ground. We have not been strong men. We've been coward boys. You see someone do wrong and you don't have the strength of a man? You're a coward. He said, the baby's going to be dashed. I'm going to cause their wives to be raped and ain't a damn thing. What, what is more humiliating and more offensive than your wife to be raped and you can't do a thing? We must stand in the stance of Yah now, Yisraya, you men of Yah. And quit being a coward uh, and so convoluted uh, and making excuses for the world. He's going to kill this world. Hallelujah. He said, your wives are going to be raped. He said, behold, I will stir up the Medes. And the Medes represents the violent mentality of this hour. The wicked is the sword of you. He's going to use the wicked to reap havoc upon the world. He said, against you, Yisrael, which shall not regard silver. They don't give a damn about money. As for gold, they shall not even delight in it. He says their bulls also shall dash the young men to pieces, and they shall have no pity on the fruit of the womb 
These damn abortion doctors don't have no pity on the fruit of the womb, do they? Is y'all full of compassion? And yet he said, even the fruit of the womb, they will have no compassion. Their eyes shall not even spare the children. Who's going to raise them up? Yeah. Who's raising up this government that we're in today? Who put kings in place? Because we as a people, if Yisrael, we of the diaspora, you that are scattered, you that have the light of your sure testimony, if we would obey Yah and walk in his mishpatah, we will be a people like no other people. I was talking to Yabin. I said, my friend, I know I have the ability, not because of my own strength, I can go in a city of block, five blocks. And if the people will listen to me, uh, you will see a renovation of a city of people, a, a beautiful environment. I can change the whole place within two years. I know I can. And there will be a wealthy people. Hell in that city block, every what kind? You make your own Chinese food. Uh, let the daughters prepare it. You can eat what you want. To. You have murder. You have riches. We have buses uh, and system shadows. Uh, we bring it into our bank. And no cook him out of it. Get Castilling uh, in hell. He'll lift his eyes. Cast the damn dog out. But no one is going to hear that. No one wants that. I could take the city and I will get the buildings there too. I will command it of the rich and the wicked. We're going to do something here you never see. You understand? But a simple messenger, they don't want that. So they will live that way in decay and poverty, sick, drunk. Look at some of you, you look drunk, dead. Your health is not well. Y'all say who removed the maladies that can leave from among us if we were. If we obey his judgment, we look dead, you're sleeping. Hallelujah. I'm going to stop there. You don't want to hear no more. Is he full of compassion? He's still full of compassion. So I preach the way I preach because I'm full of compassion. I have the compassion of Yah. I speak to warn you. That's why Yah speaking to warn us. He spoke like that to let us know the devastation of his acts and how powerful they are. And so he's letting us know, don't do that. He's like, Yah, you come out from that. You don't do that. Hear what I say. Just obey me. Because there's a day I'm not going to have pity. And you don't want to suffer my vengeance and my hand. We don't want to do that, do we? No, we don't. May the riches of Yah rest upon you. All you that have joined us in the live broadcast today. May Yah's strength rest upon you. Hallelujah. 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 All right. Some of you all get offended. Do we have anyone to drop off as we went along? Ah, so they drop off. They don't like to hear this man talk like this. But yet they will say they have compassion. They say they love everybody. I've never said that. I knew there was something wrong with that when I would hear that. I love everybody. I said, I can't say that. And I've never said that. It's difficult for me loving the ones that are with me. I've never said that. Oh, I love everybody. They're liars. That's what this polluted mind has taught us, the mind that has translated everything. How do you love everybody and you're killing everybody? How do you love everybody and you're stealing everything? How do you send your missionaries to the country and say you love everybody and you pollute the countries? You pollute the people, you rob from the people. How do you say you love everybody when the people in the South were slaves and there's no one hell they were going to overthrow that because of the cotton and the money and the wealth that was coming into this country and yet you was a big time Baptist and so what you did, you, you said we would take the Negroes and Creed or something. How, how can you say that? Don't you understand the spirit of these organizations are still there? The leaders, the founders, don't you know they're still there? If I talk like this, I'm racist, am I not? And you Negroes get the feeling sorry. I'm not feeling sorry. I will tell you the truth. Hallelujah. I don't judge no man because of the complex of his skin. He will let me know if he's a true daughter, a son, a daughter of Tizayon, or he's a, just a fool. His skin complexion means nothing to me. Hallelujah. But I know the nature of what I call the white mind. I know that mind too, you understand? And you begin to protect that. Something wrong with you. I don't give a damn who you are. Hallelujah. I protect Yah. I'm set for defense to defend Yah. Israel. Yeah. Damn every white man. Damn every black man. Yeah. Let Yah be lifted up. Hallelujah. Yeah. But we must deal with the actualities and truths of things. Hallelujah. And I'm not hiding anything. So let us examine your compassion. You will find out how much compassion you really have. You don't have the compassion you really think you have. You'll find out how much you care for somebody. 
But you don't use judgment. That 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 is the true that is the true uh, plum of any kind of compassion. That you judge righteously. You don't judge me after the seeing of the eyes. Y'all doesn't judge after the seeing of the eyes and hearing of the ear. But he judged righteously, doesn't he? And that's the way we should do. Matter coming for you, say, well, okay, you're wrong, brother, sister, you're flat out wrong. No, you're wrong. No, you're wrong. You're wrong. You're flat out wrong. And when you can't discern what is right and wrong, when you don't have no experience, you don't yada, you don't know, you are a stupid jackass. I don't care whether you're a woman or a man. I don't care whether you're a hot or an, or an up. You are stupid. When someone never has any ability to judge a matter or to correct you, I don't want to be around them. Correct me, young, in your judgment. I don't want to be around nobody like that. Hallelujah. That's why I tell the other sisters, you know, you judge the matters. You take care of the matters. Judge the matter properly. You don't judge the matter because you, if you judge the matter, you got to judge yourself. I got flaws. I know you got flaws. That's why you're in the shape you're in. That's why you, that's why you look the way you look. That's why you act the way you look. It is a fact because you don't judge matters righteously. I'm going to always judge a matter. I want you to judge me. Huh? I don't hide nothing. Come on in, knock on my door. I don't have to wait. Hold up, hold up. You know, I don't have to say that. Come on in. No, I don't have to hide nothing. You hide something because there's something wicked in you. I don't give a damn who you are. You know what you say? You can say what you want to. You judge them out of righteousness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And don't hide the wickedness. The difference between you covering the wickedness and covering it. You're wrong, daughter. Now don't do that again. Even I did that. No, don't, don't even think about going that way. You're wrong. You understand? Don't even do it again. Remind, you stir up her mind, cue my mind, will remember. You don't, know, hold on. Don't do it again. Someone wicked, they're not going to do that. We want, we want to be spoon fed. Just be nice to each other. No, hell, I'm not going to tell you to be nice to each other. I'm telling you to do what the book says. You don't know how to be nice. But I would go off the radio station there in Charlotte. There was some bishop, old bishop, and he had a group of people that would come on behind me. And of course, I would talk like this. I was ignorant. I was just a young, fiery, ignorant young man. And the only thing they would say, they would always say this. All the broadcasters that would come on after me, it was a group of them. They would get together. And he would it's just nice to be nice. So they didn't think I was nice. They never thought I was nice. And I, I said, oh, man, come on. It's nice. Some people, they just talk and they just, no, because I know what that's. You, you're trying to cover your own sins, man. It's just nice to be nice. Isn't it nice? Yes, Bishop. Yeah. Got these old silly old women. Yes, Bishop. You're right. You know something? I want to read this right here. Just to be brotherly love and to be kind. Well, I knew they, they would be sitting up there while I was preaching. And the, and the manager of the radio station, the effeminate freak, were not even, I'm telling you the truth. The man will not even, I had to learn how to operate the console. He will not even turn it on for me. He was like, if you broadcast, you do. If you don't, I don't give a damn because I don't want to hear you. He will not even turn. He said, look, I'll show you how to do it, and that's it. And I had to go in there, turn those consoles on and get everything set because if it wasn't right, the broadcast wouldn't go through. And he was not going to tell me. That's how cold he was toward me. But when that other group, it was about six, seven, eight, or eight, it was a group of them where they were coming, oh, bishop, oh, mother, oh, pastor, oh, oh, they were just, oh. And then when I would break up out of there by myself, I would break up sometimes, he would go, when I break up out of there, when I would walk out of the door, it would get so quiet, you could hear a rat run on cotton. Everybody would get quiet. They wouldn't speak to me. It didn't bother me, because when I would walk out, I would be strength and boldness like. Then he would get on there. It's just nice to be nice. People don't, don't know how to be nice to each other. Hell, the old man was a nice. He robbing the women, taking their money. I ain't took no woman's money. I haven't bought no Cadillac. Four, or five hundred thousand dollars in the bank. Don't have five dollars in the bank. I haven't done that. Okay, what no one says. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You examine yourself like you examine me. I declare unto you the fullness of Yah's counsel for your salvation, for your your shot. You saw that Yah is full of compassion. But it's not this dirty thing we think is compassion. 
They're marching for the sisters out there. Why don't they march for the wickedness of the fag dogs? Why don't the Unitarians say these are dirty bastards? They're dogs. They are dogs. They're sodomites. Oh, y'all loves everyone. That's a damn lie. He hated Esau. And he loved y'all accord. That's why Yeskia said, y'all, please. Oh, my, you're going to destroy the whole. You're going to kill everything. We haven't seen the vengeance of Yah. He killed everything on earth except eight people. Animals and all. Kill them all! Damn it! Kill them all! We don't think he's going to rage. He says uh, his hame, that's his hot, venomous, poison anger. We don't, think he's like, we don't think he gets like that. When we hear these thundering, Yah's, they're bombing nations, aren't they? This country. And breaking down. They're out to kill Gaddafi. Mr. Gaddafi. Man ain't done nothing to this country. He hasn't done anything to this country. And yet Yah is sending the thunder, the storm. And Mr. Obama, they, when they went out there to Joplin, I don't mock the people. I, man, that's, that's agony. But if you sow what you reap, your children are going to be cursed. That's why let's sow the seed of righteousness. He said, one of the persons said, man, I've been in the war and it doesn't look like this. We bombed and I, he said, this is... See, they they taking the big bomb, dropping them. But y'all said, I'm taking my win. <sighs> Your pride. Menor, they're in North Dakota. It is called the uh, the city of uh, majestic, uh, magical. And it's all underwater today. Everything. They say the water is not going to subside. Y'all says, all right, you use bomb. I, let, let me show you. Melt. He's going to bring this nation out. That's why we better learn how to love each other. Hell, you need to learn how to love you first. If you learn how to love you, you would, you would discipline you and take care of you. You would put a stick on your own fat butt. That's what we would do. I ain't taking that back. And then you'll learn how to love me. You can appreciate me. You understand? And learn how to live with each other and care for each other. Hallelujah. I watched one of them. I said, I watched them go out there. They were picking tomatoes other day. Yesterday, I said, they're getting all of this stuff. How, how many places can someone just go out there in a garden, pick tomatoes, pick some of this, pick some of that? Where in the hell are you going to do that? Go get you some nice peaches and greens out there. You want some greens? This is a stupid generation. It's stupid. Hallelujah. I'm going to abide in this ship. And I enjoy eating the beautiful things of Yah. I enjoy your fellowship. I like my brothers. I do. Hallelujah. I do anything for Yisraya. No one. They may lie on me and say I've done certain things. I've done the right by men and women. Even when we didn't have there, those I've, we've helped and done. When we didn't have... When you were neglected, I help others. I don't give a damn what they say about me. May I have rock you. All you that have joined us, do you want to send an offering? Send a gift. If your house has been reproved, then that's a blessing. Hallelujah. What a great blessing that is. That God will reprove your house, show you your wickedness, and show you where you need to get it right. And I don't take one word back. Boy, you cuss too much. That's all right. You listen to television, they cuss all the time. They say everything on that damnable thing today. They got faggots kissing each other. They got, I would not want my children to even allow that spirit on them. These dirty bearded men look like these fag dogs with a beard like mine with another man kissing a man and oh, that's so damn wicked. These women kissing women and they're, they're uh, I don't even want to express what it looks like. I say this, I don't even want to look at the pictures of that damn dirty mess. You think I want my children, that children feed my child's mind? I want, you can let them feed yours, but not mine. And here in this house, it's not going to happen. You can call me in a cult, whatever you want to. It's not going to happen here. And that's a fact. I don't give a damn what you say. And fact. May I rock you. Let us stand to our feet. Is that all right? Oh, no. Hallelujah. Drive it hard, right, Zachain Dawi? You're going to drive the devil. You, you know, if, if, if we don't drive him, he's going to drive you. Hmm? That's a fact. If you don't drive him, he's going to drive you. That's a right. So I tell you what, boy, you think you can drive. And the way we overcome him is easily. You submit to what was preached today. Submit yourself unto the Torah of God. Then you resist the enemy. And then the scripture say you flee. He's not going to flee because you said you love God. You must submit. You must allow yourself to be governed by what is preached, what is taught. You submit yourself. That's what Yaakov said. 
submit yourself unto the teaching of the Torah, unto his truth, then you resist the devil, and then he flee. You're not just going to resist the devil. No, I'm going to resist, resist. No, he, ain't go, he, he will say, go to hell. You're not even submitting to the word. What you make think I'm going to submit to you? Then you submit yourself unto the Torah. Then you resist all of his encroachments in your mind, and all of a sudden you will find the shalom. You will find yourself in the city of Yerushalayim. You will find the shalom, the comfort, the stability, the reliability of Yah. You will find yourself in that position. But you think he's going somewhere when you when you don't even uh, when you don't even submit to Yah, though when you say you love and you fear, he ain't going nowhere. You got to submit unto the Torah what you hear, the preaching of Yah's Torah. Then you resist the devil. And he must flee. When he showed your shoes, your shoes submitted on everything that was written. It is written. You don't live by prayer long. It is written. It is written. And then the enemy left for a season. He departed from him. See, that's what makes you strong. Hallelujah. Let us turn toward Yerushalayim. In all things, Yahweh will rock you. You said if we cry out while we're under this shabus, yeah. turn toward the place where your name, Yerushalayim, you said you put it there. Yeah. Then you shall hear our cries and deliver us from this oppression. Yeah. We as your nation, Israel, are here scattered. We are oppressed here. The system, the jobs, everything oppress your people. The food kills them. The way we eat. We're fat. We're overweight. We're sick. Every kind of disease you said will not come upon us if we obey your judgment. Forgive us this day. We shall make sure we shall turn this day. We shall not continue walking in the way. We shall not let our eyes override us. We're going to begin to hold fast to your truth. You have shown us compassion. You have shown us your hearts. You're not going to let us get by no more. You're going to let the wicked get by. Forgive us, Yah. We repent. And those things that are dear to us, our children, you say you will dash them in pieces. Oh, y'all help us, I pray, your people. Scattered abroad, teach our precious daughters. Scattered abroad everywhere how to bring their homes up in the nurturing and fear of their head, the husband, man, that their children will be blessed. And teach the man, the guidance of Yahshua. Help us, y'all. We are weak men. And we need your help that we may strengthen Resolve the bosom of our precious daughters of Tizayon. Guide us this day. Give us rest and comfort. We ask it all. Heal your people. Your shalom in Yerushalayim. In Yeshua's mighty name. And with our hearts, we cry hallelujah. 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 hallelujah.